Alec, nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet you, Max, finally. So, wait, so you said your parents are Polish and Japanese? Yes, my dad's Polish, my mom's Japanese. How did they meet? They actually met when they were working um, in Hong Kong. Damn, both, this, this story both. keeps getting more and more convoluted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so my, background, my background's pretty complicated, so. And you grew up where? I grew up mainly in Japan, um, Hokkaido which is the top island of Japan, a hmm. um, bit of a countryside compared to Tokyo. So I grew up there until I was 14. Yeah. And then I went all over the place for school and ended up in the UK for university and then came back to Japan in 2019. So four years ago now. Damn. What brought you, what brought you back to Japan? So I just to work, man. So I always wanted to come back to Japan after living overseas for a long time. Mm. I just wanted to start off my career in Japan. I love the food, obviously. So sushi. Yes. Since we are in Japan, we're literally in Tokyo as we speak, which is Welcome. so mind blowing to me. Like, I kept saying it yesterday. I was uh, I was having drinks with a friend, and I kept telling her, "I'm like, I can't believe I'm here." You know, <laughs> it's. I mean, it's probably you probably cannot resonate to with it as much because you were born here and stuff like yeah. that. But for like a just some Austrian kid like me, I'm like the land of the rising sun and the whatever 16 hours away from the states 16 hour time difference i guess nine hours or whatever or seven hours to austria it is so strange man in a cool way yeah must yeah. be man it is so why why is japan so good with beef what's the history there i mean they ma massage the cows you know they <laughs> treat it very well you know all the marbling yeah that's why it's good. They treat the cow right. So I mean, yeah. it's it's insane. Like I've never tasted. It's so don't, soft. Don't, don't don't you get wagyu in Austria in, in tiny in, quantity? It's so expensive there, and that's why. Like when I bought wagyu here, I'm like, are you sure this is the price? This is like super cheap. Yeah, it's, it's just it's like reasonable. the normal beef here, kind of. <laughs> Not normal, but yeah. but I'm like, this is like yeah, you can get it like in a local. Yeah, you store. just buy it at a store. Yeah. It's so crazy, yeah, yeah, yeah. man. It's so crazy. Is that what we're gonna get today? Um, get wagyu? A bit lean, so we can eat more. I mean, if you get the wagyu, you got to kind of go for the quality rather than the quantity, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Eat too much, too fatty. So today's more <laughs> of a lean man. 500, 600 grams kind of day. Oh, let's go. <laughs> I'm hyped, man. I am so hyped. And I'm also really high on coffee um, and on placenta. We drank placenta or placenta, whatever you call it in English, placenta, yeah. which is, by the way, illegal in mo every, almost yeah, everywhere Yeah, I didn't else. know that. I'm surprised that Japan's pretty strict on those mm -hmm. things, you know, like illegal stuff. So, so I don't know. Like, I saw it at the butcher. Why Why you can buy placenta here at a butcher? I don't know. <laughs> Did you ask him? Uh, no, because they didn't speak proper uh, English. Yeah. She uh, just said, not good. <laughs> not good. <laughs> Taste not good, she said. <laughs> good salesman. Good saleswoman. <laughs> And she was like, they were like laughing. There was like these two girls and they were like laughing at these stupid foreigners <laughs> buying it. And they were like, I think they thought we don't know what it is. They're like, oh my God, you know, like we should not sell this to them. In Japan, you say gaijin for foreigners. Gaijin? So you hear someone saying gaijin. Is like, it bad? It's not, it's not too bad, but a bit bad. Oh, it's like a silly little gaijin. Yeah, yeah, yeah a mm. silly little gaijin foreigner. So what is that, that other thing called? These big ass monsters from uh, Pacific Rim? They're called not, gaijin. Not sure. What are the monsters? The, what, what is the word for oh, like huge? Kyojin. Kyojin. Yes. Kyojin. Kyojin. Kyojin means, yeah. Kyo, Kyojin. 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 Yeah. K-Y-O. No, wait. There was another Shin, yeah. Shin something. Ah. Have you seen Pacific Rim? Oh, no. I haven't. Dude, no. it's insane. Like, it's just huge robots fighting. Kaiju. Kaiju. Ah, kaiju. That's yeah. the word. Yeah, yeah. So that means just monster or what? Kaiju is, yeah, big monster, Godzilla, yeah. yeah. Damn right, damn right. Anyway, so you, so you moved around and then at some point you got into fitness or how exactly did that work? Yeah, so I started fitness when I was 14. That was when I went to, I went to New Zealand for school. Oh, um, damn. Yeah, so there were, you know, big guys, you know, into rugby mm. and I was just a skinny, you know, Japanese kid. Mm. Back in Japan that time, you know, I considered being like skinny, lean, you know, long hair, kind of feminine, look mm, kind of like andro androgynous <coughs> kind of style. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I thought that was cool because all the pop stars and the people that guys look up to were kind of like that. Mm. Um, but when I went to New Zealand, I had this realization, wow, actually having muscle and, you know, being big, sporty is actually cool. So mm. it was a big cultural difference for me. And that's when I got inspired and that's when I started working out. Did you, are you a hard gainer? Um, yeah, hard gainer. I gain fat easily as well, but mm -hmm. I mean, muscle gaining is hard for everyone. But yeah, I would say I'm a hard gainer. Yeah, man, I'm jealous. <laughs> How many calories do you eat per day? Uh, like two, two point five at the moment. Trying to stay lean. 
not too much man i wear 2.5 is bulk for me oh yeah 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 oh, yeah. i hate i hate everyone so much this is like the most unfair thing in the world like I mean, yeah i'm i'm at like 2.2 is maintenance 1.8 is like slight cut for me <laughs> and like if i want to do proper cuts like 1.7 1.6 which is ridiculous i mean come yeah. on yeah one point eight, it's like you just eat freaking green salad yeah. and a little bit <laughs> of gotta chicken. get that volume in it's so stupid man i Come hate on. everything and um and then i remember my first bulk i was like cutting 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 and then i'm like finally i'm bulking and my fitness coach back then mario tomic epic guy he was like, okay, we're going to do a bulk now, 2.4. <laughs> I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I thought it's going to be 3K or some shit, you know? No, yeah. 2.4 thousand calories. Yeah, that's the reality, man. isn't it? Because if you eat too much, you just gain the fat. Mm. So. But I don't know why, man. I don't, I don't know why all the fitness coaches want me to suffer so much <laughs> and just get, like, <sighs> it's hard, man. But at the same time, I'm happy. I, I grow muscle pretty quickly. So that's yeah. at least good, you know. Like I know other guys have really trouble with with like building muscle and stuff like that. So at least that work, especially my legs. My legs they yeah. they explode. Your calves are Yeah, huge. I don't yeah. do any, it's just I just walk. I don't I don't train uh calves at all. Yeah. Never. Yeah, I'm I'm jealous of that because I have small calves. So I literally work them every day, you know, calf raises <laughs> uh, every day. But nobody cares about the calves except yeah. for other bodybuilder dudes, yeah. you know. Like I've never seen a girl like, "Oh, your calves." <laughs> you know. It's yeah. only it's just dudes, like other yeah. dudes are like, oh, "Bro, dudes. your calves, bro." <laughs> it's for the dudes. So <laughs> that's the expectations, you know. You get really fit thinking it's gonna help you with girls all it does is other yeah. guys coming up yeah, hey, bro, yeah. love your pecs, bro. <laughs> the instagram dms as well right you would expect girls to dm you but it's like guys asking you for advice so yeah, like, exactly Shit. <laughs> <laughs> like when i when i went to rock and park festival last year in in, in germany i've never been approached by that many guys because <laughs> it's a festival it's in summer you know rock music so oftentimes i just take my shirt off because i don't yeah. want to sweat it and then, like guys come up like oh my god holy shit dude what's your gym routine <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny uh so is yeah. that how you started coaching like so you you started bulking up you started getting muscle how did you then say i want to help other guys with that okay so i've always been into you know helping people giving value to people that's mm. why i started my youtube channel to start off with so i started my youtube channel when i was 17 so Damn. that was all in japanese you know just at that time no one really knew about training in japan so i mm. saw this niche you know mm. this chance so i went into it started uploading fitness content vlogs etc you know giving value and i built up an audience you know i wasn't really business minded or focused at that time i just wanted to you know be known for mm. what i like doing so yeah. i just uploaded videos yeah i got a following and yeah just kept doing that until end of university um and after that obviously you know um kind of reality struck strikes you right i mean i did do like my apparel brand and stuff but i decided to you know go the normal path of like working in a normal job and I was doing that and then I realized, you know, my passion is actually in coaching people, helping people. So I started researching, you know, how I can, you know, make it into business, how I can coach people. Mm. And I knew you from before and I knew you were, you know, doing this whole coaching thing. So that's mm. when I reached out to you and your team and yeah, became a client. And uh, how did you, how did you reach out to us? Um, you still know, just booked a call or did you do we DM or? I, th I booked a call. Yeah. Cause mm. I always followed you. Right. Nice. So yeah so i messaged you i think and you sent me a link uh yeah uh, yeah, yeah no yeah, way yeah, yeah i, think I so. gotta check our instagram convo yeah, i gotta yeah, scroll yeah. all the way up you know yeah or i went to your website and yeah signed up for the call first time i think when i signed up for the call i didn't go forward with it but ah uh, yeah yeah so you guys gave me a call and i was you know i was still had my first salary or something you know so i literally started from zero you know so it was i wasn't in that mind yet so yeah. i gave it another six months and then i was like yeah okay i'm in ah uh, nice yeah man i mean i remember yeah like you were still in a full-time job when you started with us yeah man and then so we only, transitioned out and it was pretty yeah. tough and stuff like that yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah 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 i mean i think a lot of i think for you specifically because i work with clients all over the world and uh if 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 there was like a a scale mm -hmm. on the very very left side on the super unconservative side is people from the u.s they're like they sign up for our program and they're like i'm quitting my job and we're like whoa whoa yeah let's make some money for you know so yeah. be a little bit more conservative and for you it was the other extreme yeah because 100%. i feel like also probably japanese culture played yeah. a little bit of a role in there yeah definitely man so 
how how does that work? It's like is entrepreneurship not seen as something that people should do, or yeah, how is it I, perceived? People tend to. I th I think I in general I think people take less risks here mm. there's a lot of you know social pressure you know you're from your parents from your family from your friends you know so i think it is harder for um people brought up in japan to you know take that step to do their own thing i think the hurdles very high compared to the west mm. yeah but i think that's slowly changing you know people are more open to you know starting their own business or yeah. even you know doing something on the side of their full-time job you know that used to be kind of frowned upon in the mm. past but now people kind of open to, you know, doing something on the side mm. with their full-time job. So, yeah, I think it's slowly changing. Yeah. But yeah, it was definitely hard for me at first, you know, yeah. to get into that mindset. Was it like you didn't want to disappoint your family or was it because, like, what exactly was holding you back? Um, not, well, yeah, there was slight um, points about disappointing family as well. Obviously, your parents want, you know, the best for you and then, they want the safest option for you, you know, have a good job, mm. you know, it's a good job. You can progress in your career, have a good life, I guess. But I just knew deep down that's not what I wanted. And if I wanted to take a risk, it has to be now, you know, not mm. when I'm like past 30, you know. Mm. So it kind of came to a point that I was like, yeah, just have to do it. Plus, it's not like I was jumping into something, some black hole, right? Yeah. I already had this business on the side built up you know i was making way more than my full-time job where i was working eight to ten hours a day so mm. kind of seemed like a logical decision for me yeah yeah i mean to be fully honest you know to be fully honest and transparent like i'm really i'm really fucking happy that you did it man Thanks, and i'm man. really proud that we did it and because you and I, we talked very intensely around that time. I remember it specifically when you're like, hey, this is quit my job. I'm going to tell yeah. my boss now. I'm going to talk to my father and so on and so forth. Yeah. And I wasn't sure if you were going to go through it. I was hoping you were going to go through it. But, you know, this is the first time we hang out. Yeah. This is like the first hour we ever hang out together in, in person. And, um, you know, I don't know how strong is is social conditioning within someone. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, how strong your relationship is to your parents and stuff like that. But seeing seeing you now and um i mean uh, this is this is months later after we i can't remember when you quit your job yeah, right, roughly last may, end of may so, so it's almost a year it's ago. almost a year yeah so it's like seeing you almost a year later and you look good you look fresh you you, you the energy i'm getting from you is, is relatively relaxed thanks man. and um and also seeing that you know it worked out man like just numbers wise I, yeah. i'm really fucking happy man yeah thank you very much i mean it's all because of you guys you know also so, because of your yeah. execution you know oh, yeah. oh it's it's it's, it's a two-way street you know so yeah, yeah. how much did you make exactly in uh, last month last month i did 21k us dollars so man. that was a record for me but i can still do way more much yeah, yeah. better i still have so much um to improve you know mentally and execution wise so yeah but i'm very grateful for where i am now and yeah looking forward to the journey yeah i, I just feel like i'm starting out so that's a beautiful feeling man yeah. I, it, you know i've been feeling like i'm starting out for 10 freaking years now yeah i write this a lot on instagram and it almost becomes a cliche yet i'm feeling like i'm still starting but it really freaking feels like that for me just like you said like i'm like I feel like I'm standing on a mountaintop and I'm looking back and I'm like, wow, I, I walked all this fucking way. Holy shit. But at the same time, I'm like, I have so much more energy to give. I can do this whole thing and three times more. Let's fucking go. And um, it's almost like this like endless well of energy. You just reach out, grab a bunch of energy and reach out more and it doesn't get less. Mm -hmm. In fact, it almost becomes more. And um, I don't know when that well is going to start to tilt and become mm -hmm. less, maybe when I'm in my 50s or something mm -hmm. like that. But like, um, because a lot of people ask me, for example, like, when do you want to retire and stuff like that? I'm like, I don't, I don't ever want to fully yeah, retire. Right? Yeah. I, I want to probably, you know, as I'm getting older, focus more on building a family. I want to cut back and say, you know what, top 20% of my clients, I'm going to keep, keep working with those, cut the other 80% out or something like that. But I, I don't want to stop. It's it's just, it makes me really happy and it keeps me sane. It keeps me humble, most importantly. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a beautiful ride, man. I yeah. think for guys, you know, it's important to have like a mission, you know, something you're working on. Mm. Otherwise, I don't know, like it gets boring, right? After yeah. a while, I'm sure you know because you travel all over the world, you know, have everything, you can do anything. So I 
how how how's that with you have you come to like a realization you always there's something more than more to life than just like the basic superficial things and traveling 100 percent, 100 percent. it's like uh i talked to a friend of mine earlier uh last last week we were in cyprus and she asked me like why she asked me in a nice way she's like yeah. why are you so weird or something like that <laughs> yeah. and i said i'm an agent of chaos <laughs> <laughs> and um the thing is um i want to do things that are weird just so i can say i did them you mm -hmm. know it's like hey i did go to korea to watch starcraft 2 finals not necessarily because i feel this urge that i must watch the starcraft 2 finals but i'm like i don't know when i die i want to be like oh i went to korea and watched starcraft 2 finals or like hey, i went to japan for a full month for no reason like is there anything sp or even here people ask me like why did you come here for tourism i'm like no i just wanted to be here once at least to check it out yeah so a lot of it is for me is like uh, I want to look back at a at a life where I can say I did a lot of cool things, a lot of interesting things, and I did a lot of things just for the sake of doing them. Um, it's not because uh, wait, who said that? Was it was it uh, JFK who said like we want to go to the moon not because it's easy but because it's hard? Um, so and, and also on top of that, it's like because I can. Like if I can do something, why wouldn't I? Mm -hmm. And I'm such a person that is like uh, I talked to Primoz about this recently. I could, like for me, sitting at home completely alone for four months at a row is the definition of happiness. I am so happy when I'm by myself and I do the same things every day with the mm -hmm. same routine. I love that. Right. So by me forcing myself to do all kinds of different things and keep pushing and do new things with the business, that's how I balance my innate uh, drive to do, to do the same thing over and over. It balances out. So... And, and that's really cool. And specifically this year, man, we've done so many. It's what now, April? Probably by the time we drop this, might be May. But um, we've done so much this year already. Man, we've we've hiked up uh, the freaking uh, Dolomites in, in, in Italy. We've just ski, snowboarded down and stuff like that. Yeah, you're going all over the place. Yeah. yeah. And it's such, such different climates. And then we yeah. went to Dubai, which is desert and hot, and then back to Austria. Actually, we, we went from the from the sand dunes to the mountains within like 32 hours or something like that. And, and, and then of course now Tokyo, which is city, it's just like, I love this contrast. And it's funny because <laughs> I can say this here, it's a podcast, fuck it. Uh, both times when I was sitting on the flight, I cried just because um, it was the first moment where I had a minute with myself, like uninterrupted, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting in this little, booth or whatever they give you when you when you when you fly first class and like nobody's there i close the thing i put the do not disturb on and i just cried because um i do so many things and i do them so fast that i that i very I, even before i go to sleep like i work 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 and then i have like 20 minutes me time before i pass out and then when i'm on this long ass flight i really get to reflect i'm like holy shit the last two weeks what did i do who did i meet what did i achieve with the business it, it's a very beautiful i cried for joy not for sadness yeah yeah um and, and that's a really cool thing like it's extremely fulfilling and then also knowing that i'm not just doing this for myself but i also get to share it and i help other people achieve that too and then you know i wake up i get a message from a client or, or people like you who are our clients that say like hey i did this i did that i'm like cool like i helped you on the way to get there and that's also very fulfilling you know have you always been like that you know work work yeah do okay i think so uh, i was always a uh, i was always really good at school because for me i'm like well I need to study for the next... So sometimes I would finish an exam and I'd be like, when's the next exam? Oh, it's in three weeks. Let me already study for that. Because in my head, it was a lot about momentum and I didn't want to get weak and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. um, and I think also like identity-wise, I've always identified myself as a hard worker, which is also a dangerous thing. I mean, I've talked ad nauseum about it as a... Uh, I, had, I had a period where I was actually burnt out Mm -hmm. in 2015 2016 after my third world tour so it's also dangerous to identify yourself as a hard worker because when you then cannot work you lose your identity and then like who am i and you feel really useless and you can fall into depression right. very quickly luckily enough by the time i was burnt out i had um such large amounts of income 
and the income kept coming in from my info products at the mm -hmm. dating programs yeah. back then that I sold that it didn't matter when I just took two weeks off and did nothing. Right. Um, so that really helped as well. But yeah, I, as far as I can think back, I've always been a pretty hard worker, but then I, I perfected it. It was not like I'm just, I'm just tapping into something that I've always had. I've built upon that. I have built the work ethic, the structure around that inner drive that I've always had. And if you ask my mom, she said, like, I've always built things. For me, mm -hmm. it's the building aspect that is really addictive. Um, we had this like little farm, with, like farm animals. I still remember this, like not, not an actual farm, sorry, like a toy farm. Mm -hmm. And you could, you put the housey there and you put the straw balls here and you put the cow thing here. And w all I did with that farm was I built it and then I tore it down and built it again. I never played with it. I just, right. and my mom said I kept building it and then tore it down and built it again. So that built, and then Lego, you know, you have Lego here in Japan, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. Love Lego to death. Yeah. I love build, this, this building. Just love the building. Yeah. It's and great. The, Loving the process, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The yeah. process. Yeah. And the, you know, the video games that made me by far the most addicted were builders, like city building games and shit like that. Yeah. Like, how about, uh, how about Minecraft? No, never Minecraft. Never oh, got into that, thank okay. God, because I probably wouldn't be here if I had got into that. Yeah, so that, like, I love, and, and then at some point uh, in the dating coaching times, I kind of realized, like, hey, this is just like this video game where I'm building stuff. I'm building subscribers on YouTube. I'm building content on YouTube. I'm building uh, content on Instagram. It's almost like I'm just building this tower and it never stops. And I got so addicted to it and I'm addicted to it to this day. Just building, sharing, building, sharing. Mm. And uh, I'm luckily, lucky enough in a, in a, man, the coffee makes me rant like crazy. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm lucky enough that um, I, I live in a weird place in time and civilization where I get rewarded for this. Mm. For where I get rewarded just sharing my life and, and, and sharing the lessons that I got because 30, 40 years ago, maximum I could have done is sell a book, I guess, write a book yeah. and sell that. But I like the media aspect too, so I'm pretty hyped about that. How about you? Well, did you always, did you, were you always a hard worker? How was it for you? Definitely, yeah. I was always a hard worker. I did well in school, you know, I studied mm -hmm. a lot. Um, I'm good at focusing on one thing. So when I was in school, I knew I wanted to go to a good university. So that was my goal for like five years. So I just worked hard, you know, always getting good grades and got into the university that I wanted to. So yeah, I've definitely been a hard worker my whole life. Do you think that was something that is has been given to you by culture or by your parents? Or was it something that was innate within you? I think it's been within me since I was mm. like, since I can remember, I always liked working hard. Mm. And yeah, I always liked working hard since I can remember, but I think this cultural as well, you know, we study a lot. My parents, you know, um, encouraged me to study, you know, uh, Asian, not, not typical Asian household, but you know, my mom's Japanese. So yeah. I did study like since I was like pretty young. So yeah. yeah, that as well. But I think it's just me, my personality. I like working hard, seeing results. You know, that's why I got into working out as well. You know, yeah. you work hard, you get muscles. You know, get you get rewarded for your actions. I, so it's one of the greatest feelings. I think, it, dude. It, it. I think it's so important as a young man, probably also as a young girl. But I can of course relate more to to, to men. Yeah. Um, to get something, for example, fitness, that is that teaches you to be long form oriented, that teaches you um, long form gratification instead of short form mm -hmm. gratification. Because you go to the gym once, you see no progress, yeah. you know? You're still a fat fuck with no muscles. So you really have to stick to it for like a couple months till you see the first results. And then it's usually other people noticing first before mm -hmm. you say it. And you know, I mean, you said you've got into when you were 14 or something. Yeah. As a 14 year old to learn, hey, you got to do something for months before you see a single result visibly. It's such an invaluable lesson, man. And, and a lot of, you know, if you look at a lot of 14 year olds, they don't get that. They're hooked on super short form TikTok mm -hmm. bullshit, you know? Yeah, it must be crazy these days because man. when I was 14, we didn't have, yes. you know, Instagram scrolling. Like yeah. if I had that when I was 14, I probably wouldn't be able to study, you know? <laughs> yeah. Crazy. Back then at least, you know, it was just like YouTube, you know? Yeah. So even if you got distracted, it's not short form content. So I 
could still concentrate like yeah. looking back now i think i was probably more you know focused back then yeah yeah <laughs> yeah it's insane <laughs> yeah, like it's you're crazy like man. people's brain chemistry gets fucked up yeah. nowadays it's and that's why for example podcasts are so powerful because it's like shut up sit down and listen to this yeah. for yeah. like an hour you know or yeah. two or whatever that's why i think it, it i think what's happening is there's going to be a separation just like a separation between rich and poor mm -hmm. there's going to be a separation between people who can focus for long term and, fo and people who cannot so because you can see that on one hand you see things like tiktok youtube shorts and all that going further away from long form content mm -hmm. going more into short form content algorithm you know i mean we teach this we let, yep. we are part of the problem <laughs> so we're like yo first two seconds the hook needs to be super on point you need to have emojis you need a sound effect we are <laughs> we're ruining the human kind <laughs> it's like my my grandkids like <laughs> the world is like destroyed you know my grandkids is like so what did you do to stop the advancement of advanced algorithms grandpa <laughs> and i'm like oh uh, i was part of that <laughs> All hail the algorithm overlords. <laughs> but you do good, give good advice on how to deal with it as well, you know. Like, yeah. The, well, the key is to be on the on the on the production yeah, side, not the create, consumption side. side. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then on the other hand, though, what else do you see on the rise? You see things like Joe Rogan podcast. Yeah. Which is like three hours, just some dude, some meathead Joe Rogan talking to some other guy for three and a half fucking hours while getting high on mushrooms, which is insane. It's beautiful. And then on top of that. Parallelly to that, you have the fight against mainstream narrative, mainstream mainstream media, and I mean, you can see mainstream media struggling. Yeah, there's. It's funny. Uh, a an Austrian, uh, a pretty big Austrian channel reached out to me, and they have a uh, a TV show where they're following. It's called Young Money. They're following young entrepreneurs that have made a lot of money, and they're following them around and show kind of their lifestyle and stuff like that. So they found me on instagram messaged me right. and i hopped on a call with them and i'm like well what are your view rates because i honestly want to know you're a big mainstream channel in austria in fact before i hopped on a call with them i sent them the proposal I sent to my to my family because they're they still live in austria and they're all like holy shit like i know this tv show they want you on the holy shit so they were clearly something legit and i'm like what's your view rate and she's like oh yeah we got whatever five percent market share and i'm like i don't care about the market share T tell me how many viewers you get mm. Because I don't think you get a lot. And they wouldn't tell me. She said she can't. She doesn't know. But I'm like, you fucking know. Yeah, of course she knows. Tell me the goddamn. Because, like, they probably get, like, whatever, 10,000 views max. That's nothing. Austria, small country, too, you know. And I'm like, yo, I get 10,000 views on a fucking yeah. e reel or Instagram yeah. story, you know. On so I don't need. Reel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I don't need to be on your damn show. Yeah. And, and put my and put my trust into you so you cut it together and make me look good yeah that's another thing right they can cut it up and, yeah they you know, can make it look their so, agenda yeah so. so i'm like i don't need you man like yeah. I, in fact the roi is probably even negative because i need to spend so much time with you idiots and and ask all your super dumb questions because they said like we have to follow you for like six months and the funny thing is i looked at one of the episodes for season one they wanted me to be on season two and they, and um, this is a good part for reels, by the way. We're going to cut this into some sick reels. Max Torn bashing mainstream media. <laughs> so they, they like, um, they wanted me on season two. And I looked at the uh, at season one and I'm like, okay, like per person that they're featuring, it's about five to seven minutes. And I'm like, you're following me for six months mm. and you're cutting out the, the best five to seven minutes that fit into your narrative. Mm. Why would I do that? Yeah. Because... Months. The time I spend for six months, the six freaking months that I have to spend on fucking having you, showing you around, I could shoot ads. I would make so much more money off that. So that, so you're not making me any money, number one. Number two, you're not getting me any fucking engagement because I, I this time I spend with you, I can shoot 400 reels and they probably get me 100 times more views, literally 100x more views than the shit you're gonna give me. So you tell me, you can't even share with me your view numbers. Forget about it. Yeah. Go find some other influencer chode. Yeah. Do they do they even pay you? That's the thing. Of course they probably I that we didn't even get that oh, okay. far. You didn't but get I'm that pretty far. sure right. either first of all they would have never paid me because they're like, "Well, you got engagement from it." Yeah. Second of all, they might have even asked for money then too. It's like, "Oh, you have to pay the production whatever." I'm like, "Fuck, fuck am I going <laughs> to yeah. pay?" No you return know, for you. Yeah, zero. Yeah. It's it's way, it's costing me money just yeah. in opportunity costs. 
But uh, yeah, has that ever happened to you? Any any mainstream? Not at people? the moment, no, not mainstream yet. But you're pretty big, and I mean, I mean, do do you get recognized when you walk down um, the street? Yeah, sometimes, sometimes. No way. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes at the gym, sometimes on the street. What not, do they say? not everywhere all the time, you know. But sometimes, yeah. I mean, Tokyo is like 34 million people or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Biggest city in the world, man. Yes. Uh, yeah. So what do they say when they when they meet you? They say, like, oh, it's Alec. Hi, nice meeting. I watch you. You know, just get a photo that's it pretty much it's pretty chill you know? have, have you ever had a weird request um yeah sometimes um i've had at the gym where they want to work out with me so they want to <laughs> jump in and to work out with me you know follow my routine um i'm cool with that you know yeah that's cute sure. that's funny. okay cool you know just spot me you know maybe get a video for me oh that's funny <laughs> you know, oh that's so, cool man you know, value give value take you know yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. what are your what here's what i want to know so we talked about your parents and it feels to me like they really made sure you get like a really good um uh education they sent you to all these yeah. schools yeah did that come from you where you said i want to go to this school or did they say hey we're going to send you to this school no obviously they guided me in in the right path but at the end of the day it was my decision to hmm. go where i want to go overseas you know actually it was a pretty big step when i was 13 i just grew up in japan my english wasn't as good because 80 90 percent was japanese so i just hmm. spoke english with my dad when i came back home so it was a big step for me to step out of my comfort zone leave home go to new zealand from japan to new zealand you know that was mind-blowing for me and back then there was no social media mm. you know so you felt very far away it's not like you can just contact facetime your yeah, yeah, yeah. parents so it's like once a week skype call but i think that really contributed to me growing as a person you know after that i can go anywhere like adapt very easily mm -hmm. um that's a that's where i developed my work ethic as well you know just do what you can make the best out of the situation you know it's funny because <clears throat> i can or or one can see it in someone's eyes if they've been through a lot and they're very secure in uncomfortable situations and you see when someone has grown up very sheltered and you can tell mm -hmm. one slight deviation from the norm for this guy or girl will throw them off and i can see it in your face or in your demeanor in your eyes that it's hard to throw you off because you've been the idiot for so many like you go to new zealand you barely speak english you're the idiot there yeah. you know uh you've been through a lot of shit i could tell and and i could feel that you have this like inner trust in like oh no matter what's going to happen i'll be fine and you can really you can see that in people's eyes yeah. and 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 i think that's like one of the biggest skills that a lot of kids don't have mm. and i see this too like with a lot of clients they're just like they come and they're completely i don't know how to say it in english wet behind the ears if you say that uh, you do say it in german but, that. or <laughs> green behind it or something like that yeah. you can see like yo like for that person just the fact that they have to that they are building a business now and that they have to be responsible that that's like the first time they ever do something like that and uh it of course works if they stick to it if they really yeah. want it but if you get someone they i mean dude i've had a a, a setter once apply for us he worked for us for like half a year or something like that mm -hmm. And one thing, uh, one question I always ask for sales reps that want to start with us, I'm like, what's the worst thing that has ever happened in your life? And what did you get out of it? And most people say like something super vanilla, like, oh, when I finished school, it was really hard to get a job, you know, like some super bullshit. And this guy was like, yeah, I had a virus and it ate like 40% of my muscle mass. Shit. Yeah, yeah. And I, you know, like, <laughs> that is tragic. It, it ate away like 40% of my muscle mass. And then, you know, I beat the virus and I built it back up. And like, you know, and I'm like, holy, just the way they said it, like, yeah, it happened. Fuck it. And, um, and that things like that are really fucking crazy. That is, but now he's conditioned to deal with any yeah. other bullshit, right? He's like, that's okay, like, this might suck, but yo, it's <laughs> yeah, not eating nothing, my muscle yeah, mass, yeah. you know? Like, you have something it. to compare it to, right? Yeah. And it's crazy how life works in the ways like some people get hit full on with this. Mm -hmm. Like, yo, here's your muscle mass just being eaten up. Go deal with it. And other people are like, yo, the worst thing that's ever happened to you is that you finish high school and now you got to find a job. It's so weird that people are on complete opposite extremes, you know? But uh, yeah, what do your what do your parents say now? I mean, I remember we talked pretty pretty intensely when you were about to quit your job and stuff like that to make sure that your your parents are cool with it. What do they think now? Um, now they're supportive. They're like, please do your best. You know, um, wish you all the best. Um, they're supportive. Yeah, that's they're beautiful. Not, yeah, they're not nagging me with like 
yeah, negative comments anymore. Not too much. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Do no, they? Do do you? Uh, have you invited them out for dinner or something? Yeah, like yeah. That? I just met them yesterday. Actually, they were in Tokyo. No so yeah, we went for dinner. Actually, yesterday was a chill dinner. The day before, we went for Italian. Huge meal. So I actually <laughs> fasted the day after. Oh, 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 oh <laughs> like, nice. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, we hang out. I go back to Hokkaido where they're based. Um, that's my home. Wait, where you were there two days ago? No, no. I was in. They came to Tokyo. Ah, so, okay. Yeah, good. we met up. Yeah, go for dinner. Nice. Yeah good relationship just wait till you buy a rollie for your dad or something like that you know yeah i can't wait to do that yeah, yeah. i, I want to do it but it's you know i still want to i need to wait to be on the waiting list forever till i can get my dad a, a rollie but uh i probably will give him one but in soon. japan you can get there's a lot of i've seen rolly shops so wait so can you go to because you we've talked about this uh you can yeah. go to these little boutiques and sometimes they have a rolly there mm -hmm. um what about the actual rolly store there like the rolex store those are yeah same story you know it's waiting hard. list yeah forever. waiting list yeah mm -hmm. same story yeah yeah, yeah that's unfortunately yeah, 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 yeah that's worldwide i mean maybe i'll buy one in one of these boutiques uh, the one that i yeah. sent you yeah yeah uh i didn't like it after all i had some okay. of my 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 rolly friends check it and they're like ah model yeah, i've never seen good. that one it was very unique it's it's an older model apparently and yeah. here's why i didn't want to buy it, which is very weird i didn't even tell you pretty much so the lady said it's a 2022 model and i sent it to one of my rolly friends and he's like first of all that model is older it's like mm -hmm. 2016 or something or okay. 2006 plus which is really weird is like he said the box and the card they changed them after 2019 and this is still the old box and card so if the lady really mm -hmm. told you it's 2022 well she's lying mm -hmm. or she didn't know for lack of a better yeah. you know so that kind of threw me off and i'm okay, like yeah, i don't want to invest in a i mean it was only 9k or something like that but um I plus i take you to a few other stores dude 100 so man 100 yeah, i, I want to get one as well yeah? yeah a second one yeah want to get a second one dude let's go <laughs> let's, let's go rolly shop yeah, so, yeah let's do it <laughs> i mean it would be cool you know just get a watch and, and oh i got that in japan you know man i want to get a tattoo and and a watch that just oh yeah tattoo yeah, yeah 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 what were we gonna get again was... uh the forest bathing oh yeah yeah <laughs> what is How? that in japanese um wait a shin, shinrin ryoku yes yeah, i think so yeah. that one shin yeah. something yeah. yeah why 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 did you want to get that where did you come up with the idea <laughs> well <I laughs> it's very random <laughs> i google everybody always thinks i have these super deep thoughts for my tattoos <laughs> you, you know just, you just don't <laughs> i googled like cool japanese words <laughs> and then i found a top 10 list and this one was the first one i read and i'm like that is cool man <laughs> and then i asked you i yeah. sent i'm like hey do you know this word and you're like, yeah yeah forest bathing and yeah, i'm like yeah, it makes sense right. <laughs> it makes sense at least you're not gonna get something that's like outrageous that doesn't make any sense no nah, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. exactly that's yeah. why why, like <laughs> if we get a tattoo you gotta come with us just yeah. to make sure he's just not writing something yeah, yeah. stupid foreigner or something yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's weird this whole tattoo thing it threw me off so much when <clears throat> i go to the gym i sign up and it was funny already because the guy we had to use like google translate on his ipad and stuff like that and then you know bowing all the time it was super yeah. cool and then and then i get red i'm like i sign up blah 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 I ask him where I can where I can get dressed. He shows me, and then I take my sweater off, and then he's like, he's like, oh my god, he's like, hey, sorry, sorry, and he shows me on the on the translating thing. He's like, is it possible to cover, to hide your tattoos? And he's like, super apologetic, like bowing, and you know, and I'm like ah oh, i guess we are in japan yeah so i'm like uh, i mean i can put my hoodie on you know so he's like yes please and then i put my hoodie on so now i have to work out of my hoodie uh, i have to buy like a long sleeve shirt i just haven't had the time but um that was that was like a little bit of a culture moment there you know yeah that's normal here yeah you gotta hide your tattoos so funny man so funny i mean i totally respect it that's why i had no problem I'm like yeah i don't want to uh, annoy anybody or yeah. disrespect anybody so i just work out in my hoodie here but uh yeah it's super weird man that's yeah, great because some people you know cause a scene you know if they're, oh they're yeah like, no i'm want to work out in my tank top i don't care damn but, yeah, that's good good for you for yeah yeah I, the rules. I, it's funny when i'm in europe i'm an asshole I'm, <laughs> i skip lines pretty much told you earlier i'm just like i have no time to wait in a damn line you know <laughs> And here, here I'm like a lamb. I'm like, I don't want to offend anybody. I <laughs> like respect Waiting in line is for broke people, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I remember we were in, uh, we were in Dubai and uh, we were super in a rush too. I mean, remember we had the, the, whole, the thing reservation and we were carting 
and uh, some some British couple was talking to the carding lady, and I just needed to know the Wi-Fi because we needed to call an Uber, and I just like they were talking to the reception, and I'm like, hey, excuse me, can you give me the Wi-Fi? And this British guy was like, excuse me, we're in line here, and I'm like, I look at him and I'm like, no, thank you, <laughs> and he he was just like, yeah. what does that mean? No, thank you. Um, so yeah, but I would never, I would never do that here. I just don't want to be this cliche, stupid foreigner that disrespects the culture yeah. and stuff like that. And and I hope I'm not. I hope I haven't done anything by accident that is like you know like disrespectful and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, that's that's how it is, man. And um, you work with with only Japanese clients, right? I've actually worked with one um, overseas client, but. Mm. I do mainly work with Japanese. That was a one-off where he contacted me and he wanted to work with yeah. me. But yeah, Japanese. People. I mean, how... So when I look at like Japanese nutrition, it's a lot of a lot of carbs and not much Yeah. Pro- so do, is it weird when you tell these guys like, yo, you need to like switch that around and eat much more protein or how exactly? Yeah, so my basic apro- approach to fitness is being flexible, mm. right? So obviously, yeah, if they're eating a lot of carbs you know they're gonna have to kind of reduce that increase more protein but it's not as hard as you think these days you know japan's pretty health conscious as well mm. so if you go to a convenience store they have you know chicken they mm. have salad bowls you know like five ten years ago they didn't have any oh, of yeah? these things yeah they even have protein shakes in the convenience stores so mm. it's got pretty convenient people are more health conscious so yeah. yeah it's not as hard as you think it was the same in europe man like you couldn't get protein shakes anywhere like you'd have to go to like some gym store yeah. you know where some buffed up guy was in there yeah. like in some <laughs> corner and now you go to any grocery store i mean who knows how good these damn protein shakes are that yeah. they sell it but at least it's good to like see that they're more yeah. aware of this stuff but you know japan's definitely been like s- probably the slowest compared to oh yeah the rest of the world yeah like even gyms now you go to any time but like this is very recent like five years ago there wasn't gym oh, we do have so many gyms like in yeah. our area there's like yeah. six gyms in walking yeah. distance it's crazy so it's really changed a lot where do you work out here i work out at any time mainly ah, okay, same yeah, yeah same it's convenient you know 24 hours seven days a week you can use different places so yeah it works out for me is there like a? I kind of want to this is actually a sick idea is there like a sick like in some skyscraper with a sick view kind of gym somewhere like a like a super expensive yeah yeah i think i know a few yeah we can go there we can go Dude, work out we should go there pretty much we should go there and shoot a video together yeah let's like do working it. out with alec you know like that would yeah, be man. so sick man let's do it yeah, yeah like some baller dude i Ball but gyms. i need to get a proper long sleeve shirt for that thing i think there you might get away with it yeah 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 I dude i'm might. really tattooed like you know like arms you and might stuff. get away with it yeah, yeah you might yeah <laughs> Like, I don't want to piss anybody <laughs> off. I'll I'll wear the, the long sleeve shirt, man. <laughs> I can't see the muscles though. Yeah. <laughs> actually, actually, Extra I, tight. I think I think it still looks really good when you wear something super tight, long sleeve, and yeah. it's just like filled out and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, what do your clients mostly want? Because they're I I guess they're all like kind of like skinny, androgynous kind of style, and they want to build more um, muscle. How does it work? Yeah. Um. A lot of overweight clients, also mm. skinny clients. Um, yeah, people, mainly they want to gain muscle and lose fat. I mean, that's what most guys want, right? They want yeah. to get ripped and have muscle at the same time. So yeah, um, some clients need to lose, you know, 10, 20 kilos. Some just have to lose a few and then main gain. Mm. So it depends, but yeah, mostly same goals, lose fat, um, get shredded, build muscle, get strong, feel better in the daily mm. life. And also being able to maintain that themselves because a lot of people the work culture here is pretty intense you know mm. um people work long hours so and they go out for drinks after work etc yeah. that's part of the culture so i see that being able to manage that to your diet um that's super key to maintain so that's where a lot of people fall off you know they do their meal plans they're super rigid but as soon as you know some drinking party comes up they kind of go off the rail go haywire just, yeah, yeah and just ends up you know not sticking to anything so that's where i come in and help them Boom. you know yeah. i mean i've seen that here like you know i always do like 10k steps a day and then sometimes i work until like midnight ish and then i still do my evening walk Mm -hmm. and i see like people coming home from freaking work they're like with the the suitcase the work suitcase and the 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 tie and i'm like yo it's half past midnight dude and then they're like you said they go to the bars together there's always this group of like four or five people dressed in in work clothes and they go to the bar have a couple drinks yeah 
That used to be me, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. Dude, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What did you What did you do exactly? For I mean, you? I was an engineer in a big company. No so, shit. Yeah, I was a salaryman for two and a half years. So, what did you engineer? What did you build? Um, mainly um plants, so factories. Damn. Um, for making drinks, so mainly energy saving, cost saving kind of project. Okay, so, wait, okay. Walk me through. So, <laughs> as a as a salaryman, as you call it, like, when do you get up? What do you do when you come home? So, um. We get up, I mean, it depends where you live, but I always didn't want to transport in the train, you know, the rush hour. Yeah. Have you seen those videos where they jam, sh- jam, jam, <laughs> jam people it. into the train? So I didn't want any of that. So I lived nearby to the office, so I could just walk there, you know, five minutes. So if I had to get into the office by nine, you know, get up at seven thirty, eight, just um, go to the gym if I had to that day, um, yeah. if I felt like I couldn't go at night. Um, I don't eat breakfast, so mm. I just get changed, go to the office a bit early, and then, yeah, man, just standard work until lunchtime, go for lunch with colleagues, work in the office until 5.30, depending on the project, maybe until 8, 9, and then go back home. Go oh, so it wasn't too bad. Yeah, so there was no midnight home Yeah, thing. so for me, it wasn't too bad. So it depends on the company. So my company was considered quite... Um, quite chill no, not chill but yeah quite friendly like they were very um, they took care of us you know hmm. um, so yeah I, I didn't have it too tough that's why I could work on my business on the side ah, as well nice so and also you know the COVID hit so they started implementing working from home hmm, so that helped yeah. a lot as well and the, yeah. these other companies they're just like fuck it you're here until midnight fuck it some yeah Damn. depending on the industry but these days not as much as before pretty strict on overtime work so that why do you think is that like they stepped in because too many people just yeah there were a lot of sick or yeah you see some news you know someone you know committing suicide and it's kind of becoming a big issue so yeah country stepping in setting rules and guidelines ah, so they're kind of counteracting that yeah, now exactly yeah so because i not- still remember like i when i was still in school that's what we learned about japan yeah about like in, insane work hours people jumping out the windows and shit like yeah, that yeah. all the time like that was like 15 years ago yeah, not as much these mm, days it's mm. definitely getting better man damn interesting yeah you know what you know what's ah one thing i wanted to do i wanted to ask you is like do you are you a fan of fast cars yeah i mean i yeah i don't own one yet but yeah i love fast cars because dude there is so do you, do you know the video game gran turismo i do not it's just a racing game but a super famous like it's famous for like not just like some stupid arcade bullshit but like actually a uh like a simulation kind of game on a ps4 ps5 and there's a track called Tokyo Speedway, Tokyo Highway, or something like okay. that. So it's, you actually drive at night through Tokyo. Oh, right. Okay. And it's like through the highway or some shit. Right, and right. it's like covered off. So it's like a race. It's a bridge? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. It's so. And I think actually when we drove from uh, Haneda Airport, yep. Haneda, yeah. I, I'm like, dude, I noticed this corner. Like, this is from the fucking video <laughs> yeah. game. So what I yeah. want to do, I'm not sure if it's possible because I, I can't drive here because I don't have an international driving license. Ooh. We should rent a sick car. Like a fast car, like a Porsche or some GT or some yeah. I show him the. Hey, you show yes, him the yeah, track. Yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you have a driving license, right? Yeah, I do. Yeah, we can do that. No, I was actually Dude. gonna ask you that if you were keen to do that. Dude, yeah. really? You had yeah. the same idea. Yeah, Dude, yeah. let's freaking go. <laughs> so we're gonna rent the car. I'm gonna rent it. I'll pay for it. Don't worry. And you drive it. Sick. Let's and then it. we'll drive it at night. We it has to be at night. Okay. Yeah. Let's Probably do when it. there's no, like less. Possible. What is the speed restrictions here? Are they super strict? I mean, yeah. <laughs> Laughing yeah. his last words. You I mean, know? On, on, the, on the camera, yeah, I'll say <laughs> super strict, yes. All but, right. Uh, we got to keep keep it, yeah. What, what is the maximum here? 102, 120? Uh, no, I can't go that fast, man. No yeah, way. Limits, it's less probably than... like 80. On the highway? On the highway, yeah. 80 God to damn 100, it. You yeah. guys got no chill. But, you know, depending on the time, yeah, yeah. Maybe some wiggle do room. We totally got to do. Can you, can you message Claudia to start finding cars <laughs> uh, I, I know a few oh you know uh, dude yeah. what do you think can we rent here um there's McLaren McLaren dude um, <laughs> let's can do go. Lambo oh yeah. my god yeah man a- anything yeah let's do it dude I've never never been in a McLaren man Lambo tried a couple times I tried to do ones. um non-roof I yeah that would be nice nice dude, weather man dude let's Perfect go time. man dude yeah. oh my god it's sick, gonna be so sick all right because you know that's a, that, to get back to what I said earlier that's one of these like totally useless but epic experiences yeah. like hey this one time me and my japanese friend <laughs> we just rented a, a mclaren <laughs> and then what we got to do is we got to find 
Can you do this on Google Maps? We got to find the route and then pre uh, plan it into Google Maps so we drive the exact Gran Turismo Tokyo yeah, Speedway. Yeah, that would be so Circuit. sick. Yeah, let's go, man. Because that's such a crazy thing. Like, um, you guys have this crazy tuning culture here, with like where the cars have like uh, they have lights underneath and stuff. Because that's illegal in Europe. You can't. Oh, have is light. it? Yeah, it's super stupid. Oh shit! Didn't yeah, yeah. No, here they're like they have these sick LED lights yeah, on yeah. Lambos and shit like that. Yeah, there's a whole culture. Of Dude, that. yeah, it's insane. Like, I, I want personally, I don't really like it. Um, oh, I love it. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, this like taste. over the top lights <laughs> yeah. everywhere. This is so sick, like neon lights and shit. You know where we could get into the underground area? Like, for people, like I don't, but I can research and do fine. Oh. Dude, let's go. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you, you're invited to join us on all these things, on all, all right, these great, stupid man. touristy things. Yeah, let's do it. Let's like, do it. like full on. That, that's my favorite Fast and the Furious is Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift. Yeah, it's sick. Best movie. one yeah. where he, this random white guy gets indoctrinated into this cool <laughs> drifting scene. And they're like, yeah. you know, here it's not so important if you're fast. It's more important how much you drift. And, uh, yeah. and then they drift up the mountain, out the city. Man, what a great freaking movie, man. Yeah, man. Go to Shibuya Crossing. Too. Probably. Yes, it's they did. Probably. Yeah. Oh, you do? You know? scene, Shibuya Crossing drifting. <laughs> Can't do that, unfortunately, but... <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, maybe. We'll see. No, no. <laughs> maybe. I mean, they probably, they probably like locked the area and shit when yeah, they filmed yeah, that. Definitely, yeah, definitely, man. It's the busiest crossing in the world, so... I mean, dude, we uh, what we did in Cyprus was epic. We rented a, the whole track. They're like ra so so random. Like he just found the guy who manages the track, and the guy's like, "Yeah, just come in. I'll open it just for you." Oh, sick! So we rented the whole track, and with like a modified Honda Civic, it looked super shitty. Like the car, like a Honda Civic, you know, like the paint wasn't consistent like you know it had different body parts on it and then he turns it on and it's like <laughs> and it was manual and i love yeah. manual yeah. but i love manual when i'm sitting on the normal side of the car which is sitting on the left side left for you yeah but because it's cypress you sit on the right side so i had to i had to gear shift with the left hand which is really threw me off yeah that must be pretty hard yeah, yeah. but but it was holy shit and it was the first time for me driving a, a, a car on the racetrack and uh, damn. Is it different? Yeah. Is, I'm, is it like at an angle where you can go super fast on the corner? No, no, it was no. not a banked corner, but okay. it was still like, it was, it, w it was like, okay, there's no like, you just go as fast as you want, but if you go off, you're fucked. Mm. So, you know, like third or fourth lap, I start pushing the car more because the first ones you just try to get the yeah. track and stuff. The and I start pushing the car more and I get out of this corner and the rear starts slipping and you're just like, whoa, because you're like super fast, you know, yeah. and it's not your car. And I had a girl sitting next to me and I'm just, like, oh, my God, like I'm going to kill us, you know. So you it, you sweat like your blood pumps pretty damn quickly. Yeah, you get that adrenaline, right? Totally. How it, fast were you going? Dude, uh, what was the fast straight? I think 150, not super, 150, not yeah, super fast, but pretty fast. it's the fast, the, what, the way you go through the corner, that just yeah. fucking crazy because you're like, I mean, the girl that sat next to me, she was like yeah. flying left. She was <laughs> right. like holding on and like screaming the whole time. Yeah. And um, because the G-forces are just like crazy. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, you try to find the right racing line be be between the things. And then once you hit the curb a little weird and the car just slips for half a second. And then, I mean, you drove it too. And then there's like two or three times you have this moment where you're like, this is it. We're going to crash. And you just kind of brace for impact. And then, like last second, the car starts gripping again, and you're fine. Right. And you're just like, "Oh my god, what did we, what, did, what just happened?" You know, um, it's an insane feeling, insane. And you try to be careful after that, but you again start going fast. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It, feeling. It, it, yeah. What a crazy experience! I definitely want to do this more often and stuff like that, and maybe even with with other cars. And dude, we also we should also go karting here. Have you ever done karting? Yeah, I have. Yeah. It's Are there fun, sick tracks here? Um, in Tokyo, I don't know, but there must be. So I'll, mm. I'll look it up. We can do dude, that. Dude, I'm down, man. Go karting. Yeah. You know, I brought my own balaclava. You know the. the oh, you too. I bring it everywhere I go. The what is it called? The mask thing that <laughs> you put on. Under, yeah, underneath. Yeah, yeah. I always bring it, and then people are like, "Wait a minute, you brought your own? What the hell are you doing?" <laughs> You're a professional, mate. Yeah. What do you what do you usually do like in your in your spare time here in Tokyo? Um, I mean, obviously work out. Um, I go out with friends. I don't drink too much these mm -hmm. days, but I do enjoy you know going out, getting a drink in a nice place where you went, like kind of place where you went yesterday. I you know, love with, that with a girl or with the guys. You know, sometimes go karaoke, although I can't sing. You know, <laughs> it's still fun to you know yell some rap. 
yeah man uh, i eat a lot yeah i love Damn right yeah man. i mean that's one He's of the cool. reasons why i came to japan you know because of the food oh so. really no shit yeah yeah so getting back to the reason why i decided to come to japan mm. just the food man mm. you know i was in the uk you know i mean I, the worst place ever if you like food is the uk yeah, i feel the food food's super important to your well-being and mm. just your happiness <laughs> so that's one of the reasons yeah so you, know, I, yeah. you say it like that nonchalantly you're the first person who ever says that to me yeah, hey yeah. food is important to your damn well-being yeah and like i've never heard someone move somewhere <laughs> among other reasons for, for one food. of the reasons yeah, yeah but yeah, damn that's beautiful man yeah man yeah. Is, is this also part of Japanese culture or is that just personal from no, you saying definitely I've, I know a lot of friends that they were overweight before when they were in Japan but they went to university for like a year in the UK they come back they're like skinny as fuck really because <laughs> yeah. the food is just so yeah, shit, the food is so shit. <laughs> and here you just walk out and you can literally get you know so much food just so conveniently yeah but, you know in the UK everything's shut at like 5pm on Sundays you know 8 p.m everything's shut. that's also true yeah dude we were here like you go around here at like midnight and everybody's yeah, just e awake yeah. everything's open so crazy easy so place to bulk 100%. yeah 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 <laughs> i mean do you what what is like like do you guys not sleep uh, <laughs> you know like is it normal to sleep yeah, eight I mean, hours Tokyo in never Japan? sleeps man yeah <laughs> i mean around here no never sleep you know shops are open 24 hours Damn. you know clubs yeah never sleeps but I sleep. I I'm a fitness coach, so mm. obviously I prioritize you, you my sleep. Get you, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But other than that, I travel within Japan as well. You know, Tokyo's great, but you know, you just go to the countryside. It's super nice. Have you tried onsen hot springs? No, we want. Well, is that where that. we want to go? Where the monkeys are? Yeah, the monkeys. Yeah, that's yeah, that's one of the famous spots. But we can do a Japanese onsen. That's a very cultural experience. So, but I have to you, cover my tattoos, there, right? Uh, just to yeah, go in there yeah, with a shirt, yeah, probably. Actually, no, you can't wear shirts. So we can either go to a private place, mm. so they don't worry. <laughs> I would have never gotten tattoos if I lived here. It's just <laughs> yeah, so never, inconvenient. Never, yeah, 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 it is. Yeah, but it, yeah, yeah. Actually, yeah, tattoos an issue if it's a public place. But we yeah. can find somewhere private onsen. We can do that. That'll be an experience. What if you go to a beach here? Is that also considered like a public place with tattoos? Um, yeah, like tattoos fine. On beach is fine. Okay. It's just okay. Yeah. So outside is fine. Yeah, it's like an inside thing. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's weird, man. Yeah, it's because um, you know, people in Japan that have tattoos uh, they're criminals. usually considered as like yakuza. You know, the gangsters. So that's where Crazy. the rules originated. And, yeah. You know, things don't change that quick. So yeah, it yeah. just kind of went. Through. I mean, that rule still sticks. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I reason. respect I respect that. Like, I have no no issues yeah. with that. But it's just funny. Like, I remember when I got my first tattoo. Literally, uh, two days later, I was watching football with my dad. For whatever reason, we never watch football. Yeah. And they they show a close up of a player, and he had a tattooed sleeve, and he's like, "Look at this proletarian tattoos. Only proletarians have it." And I'm like, "I have one," and I just show it to him, you know. And he's like. Yeah, but yours is fake. And I'm like, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's like, I just got this. You know? uh, yeah. <laughs> what were your parents' reactions? Uh, they were cool. They were cool? I mean, at that point where I got my... I was already, like, clearly not going down the normal route yeah, anymore. Yeah, fair enough, yeah. So it wasn't like I was in school. or I was 26. I got yeah. really late. I already had my business. I was already established. Uh, I already... I think it was... Actually, no, I had not made my first million yet it, i just got that tattoo after i filmed the natural and in fact one of the reasons i think why i got this tattoo this first one here this this one here um one of the reasons was because like shooting that first product was so hard mm. and it almost killed us that I told myself, I literally told myself, if I survive this, I'm going to get a fucking tattoo. <laughs> how, how long did it take you to make that product? I, I mean, it depends on when you would denote the start. So um, a lot of the footage that we've shot that is in there was shot around the world. So right. I've been shooting it since 2013. And 2016, we started recording the content part. Mm -hmm. um, so if you will, since 2013... But then also, if you will, like some of the teachings are refined throughout the whole year. So it was the culmination of me starting with, with dating a personal development in 2010-ish, 2009, 2010. So you could also say that's kind of where the writing started. And then I was in um, Boston in 2015. Uh, it was fall. It was very rainy, wet, cold. And 
I was there to teach a program and I think that's, I had like two, three days off before mm-hmm. where I said, okay, I'm gonna spend these two, three days in bed just writing the whole damn program. And it was cool because back then I was still, uh, I mean, RSD were very, uh, what word can I use? Conservative with their spending. Mm-hmm. Um, even though I was a pretty well-established instructor back then already, yeah. I was already making you know multiple five figures per weekend for the company and also for myself because we had a cut of 50-50. Yep. Um, but they would still be like, we're not gonna pay your hotel, go stay with a volunteer. Mm. And like the, that's why probably one of the reasons why I got burnt out so much. Like the first years only stayed the volunteers, and then I slowly started getting through the rule of like I'm only gonna. St- we still have time, by the way. When is the restaurant? Um, eight thirty. So ah, yeah, we have easy. Let's ramble. Let's some more relax. coffee in this. Relax. <laughs> so no. Anyway, so um, then li- I fought for the rule of like I'm only gonna stay in a volunteers place if I get my own room. God damn it. Because we've had volunteers that be like, well, here's the couch and I'm going to sleep next to you on the floor. <laughs> and I'm like, you know. Wait, sorry, dude, vol- volunteers. Who who are these people? Like, I mean, just RSD fans. Oh, right. Okay. They were like, hey, do you want to have an instructor <laughs> sleep? So, of course, they're like, fuck yeah, yeah, yeah you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You sleep on my couch, man. Yeah. So, it, dude, I had this one guy once. <laughs> I was you sick. must have so many crazy stories, Dude, I have man. so many. I yeah, you can't infinite. even talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, half of them I can't talk about. So I had this one. I was sick. And, I, you know, when you're sick on tour, it's the worst. Because you're yeah, sick for be, like... Because I can't cancel something. You know, yeah. there's two, three guys. They all pay $2,000. I'm not yeah. like, hey, sorry, I'm sick. I would just plow through. Just painkillers yeah. plow through. Get a bunch of people sick around me probably, you know. like. <laughs> um, and then I'm like, I come back after like a f- all night of coaching. A fever like crazy. I'm like... Like in on the couch no i didn't he had a blow-up mattress so i'm like shivering in the blow-up mattress and i'm like 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 delirious <laughs> and the volunteer comes up and gives me like a piece of paper like a like a like an a4 page like printed out and i'm like well, what is this and he's like those are my questions <laughs> oh my god <laughs> and it's like my sticking points are <laughs> <laughs> And I'm like, bro, that calibration, I have bro. fever, dude. Yeah. You, the, the first problem you have is you don't <laughs> see what's going on in front of you. So anyways, uh, I was what you need to fix first. Yeah, yeah, right? that's, the, that's <laughs> yeah. dude. And I think I even might have told him that. Yeah. I'm like, dude, this is the first thing. Yeah. But they never believe you. They're like, well, you're just saying this because I'm getting it. No, 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 this is actually your problem. Anyways, uh, I was in Boston and because sometimes you had, you were super lucky and you had a super cool guy. Mm-hmm. And this guy, ah, oh, I can't remember his name anymore, but shout out to the guy who hosted me in Boston many years ago. He was, I think, Italian living in Boston and he was a cook. And he's like, bruh, don't worry about food. And he cooked for me every day. So he got up, he would cook me super crazy meals with like, you know, like, like, like with like soup, uh, salad, main course, (laughs) dessert. And he like prepared it nicely. and, And then he would go to work. So I would just wake up. I had four days off in Boston. I didn't even leave the damn house. I would wake up, have my own room, wake up, eat this incredibly delicious food and get back to work and would write this whole program, The Natural. Uh, so that's how I wrote it. And then I think I had like whatever, two, three more months of, of tours where I would go to New City every Monday. Mm-hmm. And, then, and then I would come back. To, we, we were three people. That's the crazy thing. If you look at the way we produced it, it was highly produced. We had two cameras professional cameras, professional studio. We had, I mean, we had different outfits planned. That was really cool. Like the PT back then, uh, Dimi Katsavaris, he, he would shoot you, um, he would shoot music videos with 30 Seconds to Mars. He was on tour with Jared Leto and 30 Seconds to Mars. So he was really like, he took it seriously. He wasn't just mm-hmm. like, let me get the shot. He was like, yo, Max, let's talk about the outfits that you'll wear in the pro. So we would go shopping for the outfits. We would have props to make it look like a really cool setup, like really beautifully done. So it was him, me, and one assistant, Bastian. And uh, because when you look at it, it looks like a film crew shot. There's no, it was just three completely degenerate guys with zero, (laughs) with zero um, feeling for their bodies, with zero uh, uh, care for their bodies and mental health. It was just nonstop. So the thing was like, we came to Austria to my hometown and we said, well, if we shoot it there, we can rent my dad's studio because he's a photographer. 
it saves us production mm -hmm. costs, you know? Because back then I had no idea how much money this program was gonna make. Fun fact, right. um, the first four months it made $800,000. And wow. then, so I made, I made my first million with this product and then the years to come, it just kept making more and more. I can't remember how much exactly I made, I'd have to look it up. But back then I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And me being overly sensitive, overly um, <clears throat> conservative with estimations, I'd be like, I'm going to calculate as if I'm going to lose money on this thing because mm -hmm. I don't know if people are going to buy it. I don't know how strong my brand was. Fun fact, it broke all the records. It was yeah, the I most selling that. program ever and it was really, really grateful still to this day. But anyways, I didn't know yet. So we're like, okay, let's shoot in my dad's place where we save money. And then we all sleep at my mom's place where we have two rooms and like one couch. So we were three guys, right? So... Um, and funny enough, like my dad was like, well, you can have the studio, but I need to shoot there myself because it's my job, right? And I'm like, cool, well, when are you done? He's like, at 5 p.m. So I'm like, cool, so we can shoot at 5 p.m. He's like, yeah. So every day we would start shooting at 5 p.m. We would shoot until midnight, 1 a.m. And then come home, we would have 30 minutes to spare time. Mm -hmm. And these 30 minutes, we were just like, when you work all day, you probably know this, like your brain is, you feel yeah. super stupid. It's almost like you're drunk. Yeah, yeah You're yeah. just fooling around, like, uh, like super stupid. We would like cook crazy meals and then just um, do like be funny and stupid for 30 minutes and then pass out. And then the next day, wake up, edit, 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 and then shoot again at 5 p.m. So that's how it was. And um, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> how long did the natural take? Oh, yeah, how long did it take? <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah, so yeah. that was just like wash, rinse, repeat for like three months, I think. But you were filming at home as well, no, if I remember correctly. Uh, some, some, you mean at home in my apartment? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We had some of the bonus videos we just did at home in different places. And then, of course, and there's one of these things where you think like, okay, it's only going to be the main part plus some other small things, you know? So we shoot the main part for like three months. And then we're like, hey, we're done. Now, now all that we need to do is shoot all the bonus stuff. And then it turns out that the bonus stuff like combined is as much as the main part. Mm -hmm. So we shot parts of the bonus part in, in Cologne. And that's where it started to really wear me down. Right. Because I had been on tour for four damn years. I had been shooting this damn thing for three fucking months. And that's where I started getting the feeling of like, hey, if I survive this fucking thing, I'm gonna get a tattoo. And then, uh, and then we got all that done. And then we're like, finally, celebrate good times. And then we're like, now all we gotta do is shoot the promo videos. And then the promo videos are again, like so mentally draining because now you're like, okay, well, the program is really good. I put everything I got yeah. in there. I ran on fumes just to put my heart and soul into this. But now you're like, well, the promo videos, they should reflect that. So shut up if you need a rest and just plow one more time. So I've already been running on fumes and so now you're running even more on fumes. You shoot, and if you watch the old promo videos, if you can still find them somewhere, um, they're all shot in Austria. Uh, you have the mountains in the back. That's literally yeah, my I backyard, remember. you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we shot one there. I had to stand on a suitcase because <laughs> if I was too short to see the mountains behind me, so I had to stand on a suitcase. And then we shot some of the other ones on this boat. If you remember, I was on this stupid boat. We rented this tourist boat on the yeah. lake and we shot some promo videos there. So winter, wasn't it? Uh, no. no. Well, part of it was, that's again, yeah, like some it of it like, was winter. Yeah. And it w we shot it in like, we started shooting it in February, March or something like that, okay. which is still winter in Austria. Yeah, yeah. Um, and yeah, like crazy fucking times, man. So all in all, I think with the core, it took around from like February, March to like May, June. And then, and then I drove, uh, I flew to the States in June or July. I was in LA. And of course, me being me, I was like, we launched a natural and then we're going to go on a, like on a, on a trip with, a, with an SUV where we just drive up the West Coast and just go exploring. So I had no time off, no nothing. So we were, I was there with the camera crew. Oh, no, we went to Hawaii at first. Oh, okay. Or, yeah. We went to Hawaii and there was one video missing and that was the actual VSL, the video sales letter, which is like the, cr the, most, <laughs> the most important yeah. fucking thing. And um, I was there with our, with our marketer. I mean, we have the story too uh, in the other podcast with Mi 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 Mikhail. Mikhail, so he used to work with Ty Lopez. He then became the CMO of, of RSD. And then we were in Hawaii for like a week or so. I had my camera crew, it was two, two Danish guys. Oliver and Matthias, uh, they were with me, and um, and 
we were like, okay, whatever we do, we'll shoot the VSL right away. So we got it out of the way. So we got plenty of time, you know? And then it's like every single day, we were like, okay, tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. Because Mikhail was there with us, but he had to do stuff with Tyler. And Tyler mm-hmm. is super chaotic. Mm-hmm. Tyler is the, uh, the, the CEO, uh, one, of the co-found, one of the co-founders of yeah. RSD. So it was literally like the last fucking day. Next day we flew back and we're like, we still haven't shot the damn VSL. Day passes. We're like, don't worry, we'll shoot it at night. Night passes. Don't worry, we'll shoot it just before your flight. So, dude, it's nighttime, 2 a.m. in the morning, just before my damn flight. We physically had to shoot it right now. And then we're, I'm, dude, I don't, you can't see it in my face. I don't know how I did it, but I was <laughs> freaked out beyond, freaked yeah. out, panicky, anxious. And we finally find a shot that is decent with like cool lights in the background. Mm-hmm. I'm wearing my Jurassic Park tank top. Branding back then was just like look as shitty as you can. You long know? hair as well. Yeah, right? yeah, the, yeah. The, the the man bun thing. Yeah, yeah. and and then I, I swear to God, I start talking, and music starts behind me, because <laughs> it was some resort, and I'm like, oh, oh, I man. can't fucking be. Okay, let's move. We move. Da 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 da. We finally find another spot. Thirty minutes later, you know, I start talking. The fucking sprinklers go on <laughs> and just sprinkle me wet, and I'm like. I can't believe it's happening, you know? So the third shot, we finally got it. And it was crazy because uh, we didn't use teleprompters for whatever fucking reason. Dumbest thing in the world. Nowadays, I use teleprompter for everything. Like, oh, we need to shoot an ad? Just, yeah, I'll just read it off, and you know? And nowadays, uh, and back then, I was like, I'm not going to use a teleprompter. I'm a public speaker. I've been public speaking for six years. Fuck this. I'm not going to use a teleprompter. So I had to memorize it the whole VSL. So it was like, read a paragraph, ba 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 Fuck, forgot a sentence. One more time. ba 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 Done. Read the next paragraph. ba 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 Like this. And like, uh, Mikhail, the, the, the CMO, was just standing next to me with the iPad, with the text. And it's a long-ass VSL. It's like 35 minutes or something like that. Shit. So yeah, we finally shot it. Like it was dawning. I was like, I think I cried and shit like that. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was really, really tough. I cried yeah. so many times creating this program. <laughs> <laughs> and then by the time was out, by the time it, it came out, I didn't even care anymore. Yeah. Because for me, it was not about being successful with it. For me, it was just creating it. Mm-hmm. So by the time I had created it, I'm like, cool, I'm done. And they were like, hey, by the way, here's the sales numbers. I'm like, this is amazing. Holy shit, we're selling a lot. But I'm like, I was not emotionally involved in it anymore. Right. That's how exhausted yeah. you were. From I was it. a shell, shit, man. man. I was an empty shell. So after that, you kind of took a break. Uh, no, no. Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I think I'm such just a stupid going. idiot. <laughs> I was like, "Fuck it, let's go." Uh, and then I and then I think I went on my fourth world tour, something like that, or like a mini tour or something like that. And then, or did I? I can't remember. I I do remember distinctly. I went to a couple cities. Yeah, yeah. I went to it was a mini tour. I think I went to New York, London, Amsterdam, Berlin, something like that. Like the best cities. Yeah. Um, L- yeah, LA, LA, New York, London. I think I did, and that was already way too much. But I still knocked it out. Um, it was pretty cool. And then I moved to Helsinki. Well, was it mainly due to like exhaustion, having enough that you moved on from dating to business? What was like the catalyst for uh, you? I wouldn't say exhaustion because by that time. I needed to work even harder to build the the business consulting up because yeah. I needed to prove myself in a completely new niche and yeah. you know when you change niches like you know I I very rarely read comments and if I do they don't affect me as much but back then it was definitely more mm. yeah and you would see people like go back to dating you're not a business guy what the fuck Max you think you're all legit now and shit like that you know and it really hurt yeah because, I remember that yeah yeah, yeah so I, I so I needed to work extra hard just to get over that and yeah. I, and it's really cool now like. Now, really, like this year and maybe last year was the first time where I would meet a bunch of people that are like, oh, yeah, hey, oh, wait, wait, you did dating before? I had no idea. Well, like yeah. people that legit knew me from only the business as the business guy, mm-hmm. which is really beautiful. Like ever since we started running ads, it's really cool to see that. Um, but no, the reason why I transitioned was there was there's many different factors. Number one, I got really bored. Mm. Because with dating, it's always the same. Like I've been, yeah. I had been teaching dating for eight seven eight years and it's like still people will come up to me how do i approach and you know and you as a as a as a person you've evolved so much like you would think about such high level problems like relationship management and like crazy different things that you would do and then you would still deal with this but what do i say you know like just super standard problems yeah and one thing i like about the business thing is like you bring people up from zero 
right? Like we did it with you for zero to 20K a month and stuff like that. And, and it's really cool. Or you come, I actually, you think, I think you came to us and you already made some money and then we helped you make more or something like no, that. No, from zero, man. Was it from zero yeah, for from you zero. as well? Great. And then, and then there's the infinite growth, you know, like we're at a level now where we help you hire the first person and mm -hmm. so on and so forth. And then we help you manage that. And like, we have people that started with us, made zero and now they're making 250, 300, 400,000 a month where you're like, they have an office, they have families to feed, you know? It's like infinite growth, which is really cool, mm. which I really like. And um, so that was one aspect. Okay. The other aspect is, it was just my personal interest. I had gotten so addicted to business and I loved sharing stuff about the business. And I'm like, hey, this is, it's so similar to dating, you know? Like, instead of like being on a date where you try to show yourself from your best side, you do that with marketing too, but it's mm -hmm. not just to one person, but it's to the world, which I found like an, an extrapolation of the whole dating concept, which I found really cool. And then I could mix it with social dynamics. Like so much of the things that I teach in sales, for example, to my sales team, I've never been a salesperson on the phone. I've only sold from stage maximum, but like 90% of the, of the concepts I teach my sales guys is just social dynamics of like, hey, if you say this, what do you think is the other person feeling right now? Yeah. Hey, did you listen to what the person said in the discovery phase 20 minutes ago? And like, be aware of this. It's all just dating. And it, and, and it's funny because it, it helps with sales. It's really funny. No, 100%, I agree. Yeah, and then the other, and the, the last point was that um, a lot of guys started asking me this. I, I remember distinctively, um, one guy bought the the one on one advanced program with me in the dating mm -hmm. for for twenty four thousand, and uh, and I'm like yeah you know I jump on the first one on one call with him and I'm like hey nice to meet you so tell me about you know uh, tell me about your dating life like what do you what it is that you want to achieve and he's like oh no I'm married happily for ten years anyways I wanted to ask you about the business and I'm like is that you're married why are you buying the dating program he's like I wanted to learn business from you. <laughs> and I'm like, ah, and then you got more and more people like that that right. would just ask business questions. And so it was kind of like a natural thing. I see, I see. Yeah. Uh, you know, the interesting point that you said, you know, sales is um, dating and social dynamics. I fully agree with that. It's very interesting. You know, my path as well, you know, I started working out. I told you I started working out at 14, but I was into, you know, self-development, mm. right? Um, developing as a guy. So obviously getting girls and social dynamics is a big part of that. So that's where I, you know, started um, following you guys, um, RSD and you in particular. And yeah, it's just so um, interesting now like on the sales call with my clients, it's all just, you know, so basic social skills, yeah. you know, that I only learned through, you know, approaching, talking to people, mm. socializing, like all those lessons I've carried forward and they're all getting used now. So it's, yeah, it's pretty, I don't know, man, it's pretty crazy. I feel like everything had a meaning, you know, it's yeah. all led up to where I am now. It's crazy how things are connected and then, yeah. how old are you now? I'm 28. Dude, so young. <laughs> and already got so far. It's really beautiful, man. Thanks, man. Um, it's weird because like the older I get, it's such a cliche thing to say, everything happens for a reason. It's such a <laughs> yeah. stupid thing, you yeah, know? Yeah. But the older I get, the more I sound, I believe in that. And mm -hmm. the more I tell like younger people in my team or clients, I'm just like, hey, listen, I know this hurts right now. I know this suck, but everything happens for a reason. Yeah. I'm now that <laughs> yeah, stupid that guy person. who says that shit, yeah. you know? Yeah, I think everything, you know, happens because of a reason, but also... Um, sorry, everything happens for a reason. Yeah. 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 And it's beautiful to, to see that. So I'm pretty sure like this is probably something that you teach your clients too. You know, they come to you because they want to get shredded, but then probably you answer a bunch of questions about dating and, and like yeah. the charisma yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Too, so right? the funny thing is a lot of my clients, obviously they, their body transforms, you know, they get shredded, they get ripped, but I put a lot of focus on the mental side of things because that's super important to be able to, you know, continue being fit by yourself. So it's actually really interesting. Most of my clients, you know, they didn't have a girlfriend before. They suddenly mm. get a girlfriend. Mm. Some get married, no you know. Way. They they always hated their job, but they some reason stayed in there and all of a sudden they switch jobs. You know, they just get this courage that they built through fitness and they can apply it to other areas of their life. So, yeah, it's beautiful. It's not just fitness. Yeah, I do <laughs> teach you know, the basic social skills kind of things as well and just all around self-development. So for you, kind of fitness was almost like a gateway drug. Yeah. It's funny. It's like literally like a positive gateway drug 
to improving your life in exactly. other areas. Yeah. So fitness was the first step. It was yeah. the base of everything. You know, oh, if I put in the work, I can become better. So that was the first yeah, experience that I got there. So I just kind of got addicted to, you know, you know, working out and just doing the work to get the results, mm. bettering yourself. So I actually enjoyed you know, working hard. Getting back to the question, were you always a hard worker? Yes, I actually enjoyed yeah. it. I enjoyed seeing the results. And You uh, know, what I always admire in fitness coaches is the fact, and I'm, I'm wondering how you deal with this, because for me, if I just want to let loose for a month diet-wise mm -hmm. and just be like, fuck it, I'm in Cyprus, bring me the ice cream, blah, 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 blah. And I gain a little bit of weight. It's not a problem because I'm not a fitness coach. Yeah. How do you deal with that? Is that a certain pressure that you feel to always stay in shape because um, your livelihood depends on it? Not necessarily, no. I mean, I don't think it's that hard, you know. Like, if you let go for a day or two, you can always get back to the routine again. You know, you're not going to get fat from just eating shit for a day or two, right? Yeah. If you make that a routine, yeah, it makes you worse. It's like, if you're fat, you're not going to lose weight by just eating a few healthy True. meals, right? So, True. it's the same thing. So, I found it pretty easy to always switch back. You know, sometimes, yeah, I would be like, fuck it, I'm going to eat ice cream, you know sushi whatever is inside but after that next day you don't really feel like eating anyway you're True. like okay today i just want to feel better so let's just cut down on the food so it's funny that you know. when you're used to like a certain healthy lifestyle you actually like bad food actually makes you feel bad exactly yeah it's funny so yeah i prefer eating healthy yeah yeah because like my dad for example god bless him he's fat he's 60 years old he's fat mm -hmm. and he's like you know he visited me in cyprus last year um And I'm like, I'm waking up, I'm making breakfast, you know, steak, eggs, super lean, low carbs. And he's just like fucking fried calamari, <laughs> chocolate croissants. And I'm like, what are you giving you? And, you? and every day, three times a day, the whole trip. And I would like, I would eat, I would like eat one time shitty food with him. Yeah. And I would just feel like shit for the yeah. next 24 hours. Yeah. And, and that's the crazy thing. Like regular people who eat shit food like this and, and that's the crazy part like shit food like this is normal nowadays yeah that's a baseline yeah them, right of course you eat the french fries. what the fuck yeah french fries they're not super good but fuck it no dude they're dog shit and i'm like so this is how normal people must feel every day then for them feeling like shit is normal so of course they can't step up their fucking life mm -hmm. of course they can't go approach a cute girl that they find interesting even though they had a crush on them for fucking years of course they can't step up and go to the gym of course they can't cut a little bit of sleep instead of sleeping for 11 hours on the weekends of course they can't work and build their fucking business of course they have zero drive to push them outside their comfort zone because of the shit food is making them sluggish, unfocused, tired, probably low testosterone. There's probably all kinds of chemical imbalances that yeah. are going on within them. So that's why I think like stuff that you do is so much more important than you think. It's so much beyond like, oh, just get a six pack and yeah, look good. Yeah, so beyond, 100%. Because like you said, like your clients, they step their fucking life yeah, up. Yeah, exactly. It's insane. It's not just, you know, eat these meals, work out, get fit. It's not, it's deeper than that. Yeah. And that's what I emphasize through my coaching. Yeah. I think that's what differentiates me from the rest of the, you know, coaches, fitness guys out here in Japan. Yeah. And that, especially in your niche, there's so many like fitness model idiots that are just like, get the fuck yeah. six pack. Yeah. Yeah. Looking yeah. Looking good flex in Dubai and shit like that. So with the pressure thing, I think everyone, every fitness guy has a pressure because you open social media and it's like jacked up, you know, six pack mm. everywhere. So yeah, obviously there's a pressure, but again, you know, just focus on yourself, you know, and I think, yeah, that's okay. Do you ever do a, a blood test to check how your testosterone and your nutrients? I have, like but it was a few years ago, but I was healthy back then. I might do it again recently. Um, I do it. I do it super frequently now. I do oh, it yeah? like multiple times a year. Okay. I love it because my results are always super awesome. So I kind of get yeah, addicted yeah, yeah, to, yeah. you know? Yeah. You get addicted to the good results. Yeah. Right? Because so like, it's, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm sure for a guy like you, it's probably all off the charts, you know? So like when I looked at my testosterone, especially after I started eating meat, It's like, and this, this is the crazy shit. I don't know if they do this in Japan too, but uh, in the West, in like uh, Europe, US, what they've done now is they're adjusting the range of acceptable testosterone mm -hmm. downwards. Yeah, I've heard that. Yeah. yeah. yeah so yeah. it's like because testosterone is declining 
everywhere. It used to be much higher yeah. before I So now they're like, yeah. oh, well, it's just adjusted down. So these yeah. fucking simps are still in the acceptable <laughs> range. Yeah. And, and like when I, when I was still a vegetarian, I was a vegetarian for 12 years. Uh, oh, I, I always did. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Locked off. I always did blood tests just to make sure I got enough iron and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So my testosterone, and I felt towards the end especially, I felt sluggish. I felt yeah. not, re I couldn't resist stress as much as I used to. And I just thought it was because I'm in my thirties and I checked my testosterone. It was still in the acceptable range. It wasn't in the middle. It was rather in the bottom third, but it was still right. in the acceptable range. It was probably one of these things where they adjusted the range down and now I'm in the acceptable range. And then um, I did a blood test to think one or two months in after eating meat and it was uh it was uh 30 percent higher so it got Huge. to the to the top and then i did it again like six months later and it was above Shit. It, it was the acceptable range and my thing was like all the way on the right so i'd be curious how yours would look like yours is probably super high as well do you think that's meat that did that mm, probably a variety of factors i don't i'm always like with fitness um I'm always like, don't bother me. I don't care. Just tell me what to eat yeah. to get the most amount out of it. Yeah. Um, it's probably it's probably fitness. It's probably the, the meat. I think to a large degree, and um, also though what I don't eat. You know what I mean? Mm, yeah. Like because uh, for protein as a vegetarian, you eat a lot of um, processed cheese, uh, low-fat cottage cheese, and carbs as well, right? Yeah, exactly. So I ate I just a lot of a lot of shit stuff. Yeah. I was so bloated all the time. Right. Like I always had a fat belly from mm -hmm. all the vegetables and all the stuff. And then when I started eating meat, I got really lean for what, no fucking reason. Yeah, getting lean is super easy on low carbs and yeah. high protein meat, eggs. Well, yeah. how many, how much protein carbs do you eat? What's your um, macros? I don't eat too much protein, just two grams per kilo of body weight. So not too much. And I like eating more carbs. It yeah. Fulfills me more. So that's oh, yeah. how I do it. So can you share the numbers or is that a secret? Um, no, no, it's not a secret. I weigh 72. So I aim for around 140 grams of protein a day. And carbs? Um, and rest carbs and fat, like 200. 200 grams of carbs? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, beautiful, And then fat. I, it depends. Like, sometimes I feel like going low fat and eating more carbs. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I feel like eating fat and keep the carbs low. So just hit the protein and the rest's pretty flexible. So you me. attuned your... You're really attuned to knowing what you're craving? Yeah, exactly. That's sick. Yeah, and I don't really, like, track calories um, to the T anymore. I kind of know how much yeah. I'm eating, like, if I overate or if I underate. So, oh, that's sick. Yeah, it's kind of relaxed me now do you also have this is this is an interesting question i want to ask you do you also have do you feel um effects of other things like when you drink tea caffeine uh when you eat so for example when i eat something that has super nutrient i mm -hmm. feel it maybe it's placebo effect who mm. cares but do you feel the difference are you that attuned to mm. yourself not that caffeine yeah obviously mm. but um, I mean, obviously, I'll feel good that I ate something super healthy. I think it's mainly placebo. I, I'm not that in tune where I can feel yeah, the okay. nutrition's absorbing. And, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, <laughs> but, who, who knows? Probably 99% know, yeah. placebo for me. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> but I feel everything so hard. Like when I drink a glass of wine, I get drunk. I literally, oh, yeah. I shit you not, know, ask pretty much, I yeah, get so drunk. Yeah, so alcohol, caffeine, yeah. yeah. Definitely feel it straight away if you've been moderate on that. All right, we're back after a quick break uh, can i ask you one question all day so when you were coaching dating did you actually teach guys like about taking care of their body like health as well a little bit a little, a little bit, bit. Okay. um the whole premise is and i still stand with it is like you don't need to be good looking yeah to, to have success with women but um especially later i was like hey try to be the whole package yeah. I call it like, I, I, it's not even my name. I stole it from Tyler. It's like the man in his prime lifestyle, which means like try to cover all your bases. Yeah. Try to live healthy. Try to do all these things because not only you owe it to yourself because you want to fulfill your potential, but I also felt like when you settle down and you get into a relationship, I also think you owe it to your girlfriend or your wife or your boyfriend or whatever you're into that you become the best version of yourself, you know? Yeah. That includes fitness as well and all other aspects. Yeah, because, you know, the reason I ask this is because first, I either thought of going into dating or fitness. Obviously, I went into fitness. But, you know, the reason why I did that, because even if I was to coach dating, I'll probably, you know, start off with take care of your health, you know? <laughs> be con like, you can't just be like, yo, be confident, bro. It's like you have yeah. to 
do good to yourself take care of yourself then you can be confident right so yeah. that's how i kind of thought okay fitness is the base for like everything so exactly. that's why i thought okay fitness first maybe in the future maybe i can do something on dating but yeah that's why i chose fitness and that's why i was curious if you did that for I've, me it was the the other way i i for me it was um, social dynamics is the base for everything and then right. you get into fitness right okay. but it's like again it's like a gateway drug yeah and and i have this too like so many of my clients now um they started with the dating they're like oh you know i watched you when i was in my 20s and i got an epic girlfriend and i got this life hand like this and now that i'm in my 30s i want you to help me build a business and uh you know it's really genius i gotta give props where props is due a lot of that is tyler Mm. or owen cook how he's now known because he used to literally say he's like guys he used to tell this to all us, us other instructors he used to say like guys all these rsd fans they're watching us right now they're all in their 20s okay if you keep producing cool content you keep getting val giving value in 10 years all of these guys are going to be seven figure six figure seven figure eight figure business owners and uh, and then they're going to buy the super high ultra high price programs from you and I was like, I was fucking 23. I'm like, what do you mean 10 years? I'm not going to wait that long, you know? <laughs> but now that I'm 32, I'm like, that makes exactly... That's what's happening now, right? Literally. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's so crazy. Like so many of, for example, of my mentors now, um, my eight-figure mentors that are helping us scale the eight figures, they're like, oh, Max Torno? Did you used to coach an RSD? I love RSD. They're like, they know, like everybody knows this. Like yeah. I'm on the phone with some some random eight figure IG Instagram guy and he's like, oh, RSD. Yeah, shit, I still remember you guys. They're all like that. And I'm mm. like, thank God damn Owen, he was right. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, what else do you want to ask me? Um, That, that was the question that was it? <laughs> at the moment, yeah. <laughs> I'll probably have a few more pop up, but yeah. I mean, dude, what's what's your plan do you have any i mean you gotta have like a rough plan of what you want to be doing in the next couple of years yeah so obviously um scale my fitness coaching business obviously i'm getting my first hire so it'd be great to you know have a team you know build a team have that experience of i don't know you said it sounds very fulfilling to have other people to be working on your vision with you like having a team so i'm mm. very excited to experience nice. that so yeah i think a few years i'll do fitness um and then after that i might transition into business or something Sick, but first all in on fitness um i want to do a few million in fitness then maybe transition into business because the skills that i'm learning now i can teach that as well right mm -hmm. in the future 100%. so i do see like transitioning kind of same path as you in the future I'm, i mean earlier you mentioned kind of like you mentioned a couple of times like the fitness niche the fitness uh, culture in japan which yeah. i'm of course not very much aware of mm -hmm. how is it like are there like yeah. a bunch of shirtless instagram model dudes yeah. really so it's a quite a big um issue in japan i mean there's obviously a lot of steroids um mm. a lot of jack dudes on social media are they legal here sorry to interrupt um after drinking think, placenta from a, <laughs> a butcher <I'm> a <laughs> so I, I think it's not illegal to use no shit yeah um, don't quote me on that but yeah obviously people use it so there's a way to do it so yeah i mean anywhere you know the fitness industry it's always going to end up like this i knew that mm. to start off with so i had a path of you know going into that you know full-on doing steroids and competing but it wasn't really my thing i was always into like lifestyle and bettering yourself as a man like whole package you know fitness social skills everything so i stuck to that and i think now there's kind of a wave of you know, that side of things being more valued, mm. you know, rather than just like working out to compete in shows. That's like the main mainstream mentality here. Mm. It's like, why do you train more? Obviously, because I want to compete. Why else would you train? Mm. But for me, it's like you train to better yourself and feel better and be confident, you know. It's funny because when I was in Korea, it was very similar. I was there in 2017. So yeah. that's now five years ago. Yeah. And I, I was like almost alone at the gym. Uh, and it was all just like bodybuilders who yeah. would go there. Yeah, yeah. So it used to be like that, but now it's pretty mainstream. You know, you see mm. young kids. So it's great. I mean, that's why I personally started my YouTube because I wanted to inspire people to start working out. Because in Japan that time, it was like, why do you work out? It's stupid, you know. It it's was, just a waste of time. Kind yeah, of a waste yeah. of time, meathead, like <laughs> stupid people, etc. It didn't have this image of like 
being healthy, cool, you know. So but you said you tried steroids and walked down a path. No, 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 like no. I never, never, oh, never okay, have. Okay. Yeah, so yeah. You th- because you said like there was this path of like. Yeah. So I was, you know, into the YouTube and everything. So there was a path of either like going full on like fitness competition yeah. guy. So do steroids, go um, compete, you know, try to get that placing. But it hasn't, it wasn't, it doesn't resonate with me on a deep level. Yeah. Know? Plus I was a student and, you know, financial stuff as well. I wasn't, I was not responsible for everything yet. Yeah. So I wasn't in the position to make that decision. That's mm-hmm. how I felt anyway. Mm-hmm. Although I do know a lot of like students doing steroids and stuff, but yeah, I just, I just never went that path. So I always stuck to just being natural, you know, working out. And yeah, I think that's that decision I'll stick with for the rest of my life. I mean, un- unless like my T levels naturally decline in my 30s or something. Mm. Yeah, that's one of the things that I'm willing to do when I'm like 40, 50 or something like yeah, that. Like, that's uh, fine, understandable. Testosterone, repl- testosterone replacement therapy or something like that. Yeah. But I also think like if you, for people like us, I, again, I'm just like eyeballing this. I might butcher this completely. But for people like us who've been into healthy nutrition, healthy lifestyle for so long, mm-hmm. I think we can carry high testosterone levels very long for, for a very long time into our 40s and 50s. Yeah. Then, of course, genetically, it does play a role as well. But we'll see how I feel right now. I, I Funny enough, my, I, I feel and I know that my testosterone levels now are much higher than when I was in my 20s, like 25, 26, 27 ain't got nothing on me now. I'm 30, 32 year old fat max, 30, 32 year old max. Like I have much higher testosterone levels. I feel much better too, which mm-hmm. is insane. So I'm very grateful because I, I don't take this for granted. And uh, I hope it carries on like this for a couple more years. Yeah, I mean, you look the most jacked, right? Compared yeah. to your 20s. I, I, I think so. I feel right. bigger. Yeah. which is uh, you look pretty cut on instagram man yeah uh, that also that's the funny thing i'm cut and big yeah. at the same time so this whole like feeling deflated i don't have anymore i used to when i cut i felt very deflated yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know the other thing is hunger like meat is just so much more filling for me i don't know why it is yeah because it so is well. fat and, and the juices yeah, and whatever total nutrition package it has everything so, yeah yeah no definitely more filling um high proteins more satiating is it? Yeah. I didn't know. I always yeah, thought yeah. it's more like the carbs, but no, it really is like the yeah, I eat, like, I get, like I eat steak. And the funny thing is I've eaten steak now for over a year every single day. No. Wow. For like, you know, maybe there was a handful of days where I cheat day where I just ate cereal in the morning or some shit yeah. like that. But usually like, so I started eating in April last year, 2022. And like every day since then, around 400, 500 grams of steak in the Damn. morning. So that's a lot of steak. That is eating, a lot. You know? So you'll be eating like a kg today. Yeah, yeah. I eat almost every day <laughs> Crazy, one kilogram. Man. Yeah, I don't give a shit, Your man. parents must be like, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. I mean, my dad is like, because <laughs> yeah. I now, the, shout out to my dad. I gave him a lot of shit earlier that he's fat and, you know, yeah. but w- one random day he's, because I'm always like, hey, I'm hitting the gym. Do you want to join? And he's like, Pff, you know, <laughs> and then this one day he's like, yeah when are you there and I'm like yeah at 11 see you there and then he fucking shows up with a bandana like oh, hey, to pants hey. and I'm like oh, hey I'm let's inspired. go yeah and then he's like okay what do I eat you know so he started hitting it was funny because I told him like listen because my dad is super cheap what he, the only thing he loves more than food is saving money <laughs> <You know? laughs> god I love you dad <laughs> this is coming from a very heartful, heartfelt position and uh and i'm like okay listen if you manage to go to the gym two times a week i'll buy you a monthly pass and if you don't go on average two times a week you have to pay me back the money so this motherfucker went two times a week like he did not want to pay that money back amazing you find a button for i found that plug it took only 60 years for him to find that you know so um he sends me these videos now all all the time like gym session number two out of two this week you know he loved the bicycle and and he's also like he's like what do i eat you know and i'm like oh just eat steak and he's like in the morning what the fuck (laughs) but it's dope i love it like i after eating it for a full year every day, I still, I go to bed and I'm like, can't wait for that steak tomorrow. Yeah, in the it never morning. gets old, does it? Yeah. It does not get old yeah. at all. I don't know why. It's just so yeah, good. Same. Especially here, man. Oh. Yeah, it's amazing. It's so good. It, it's so tender, man. Fuck. Yeah, man. Even, Damn. Yeah, the fill, fillet steak, the Japanese steak. Yeah, it's amazing. <sighs> so is that what we're going to have today? Today, um, we're going to have roast, roast beef. So a bit leaner, but it is soft. Very Fuck soft. Yeah, let's go. It's man. American. Is that the only thing you can get there? Because you um, kept saying roast beef. Yeah, it doesn't have a menu where I can choose. No, it's like, 
You'll see, you'll see. But the main thing is the roast beef and there's sides, salads. Yeah. And, yeah. So is it a cheat day for you today? Kinda. Basically, yeah. I haven't eaten today other than Ooh. like a s bit of steak. I had a bit of steak oh, yeah, and eggs, <laughs> so probably like 500 calories. Oh, nice. So nice. Yeah. So when I go out like this, I know I'm gonna eat like yeah. crazy. So I tend to save up on the calories. That's smart, man. That, you know, it's funny. Like, uh, is that the same for you? Like when I was it's, since the last couple of years, like my idea of like partying hard is going with a bunch of cool people to a restaurant and just eating. <laughs> it's not like like drinking and going really? to the club. Yeah, for me, it's just my idea of like, guys, let's just go nuts today. <laughs> let's go to a restaurant and order all the food. That's my idea. Yeah, that sounds fun as well. Yeah. But maybe after go for drinks and party. I'm down. I'm down for it. Like, that's the thing. Like for me, getting drinks is like three, three glasses of wine and I'm shit-faced. I'm done. beyond <laughs> to carry me home kind of thing. That is literally my idea of, of, but it's funny. I mean, because as a dating coach, I lived in nightclubs. I literally have yeah. a concept that is called yeah. make the nightclub like your living room, spend more time in the nightclub than in the living room. Yeah. So I would coach guys in the nightclub six nights a week. You never drank those times. Right? No, never. Zero, zero times. So I mean, maybe like one time I got a drink because a girl invited me or something like that. We actually have a video once. Uh, it did not end well. It was in, in Copenhagen. Um, you had like these like outside bars you know and this girl was like hey it's my birthday i buy you a drink she buys me a drink and i pour it and i'm like i don't drink thanks <laughs> <laughs> and she was like what Man, the, what the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't do that now right no now i'm much more i'm less extreme i'm still an agent of chaos but i wouldn't do oh, it anymore that's crazy, and she right? she that was over she i think oh, she yeah, took man. the secondary and shoved it in my face yeah that's yeah. that's all nice <laughs> yeah yeah because i thought it was funny you know i was like no thing you know <laughs> uh, yeah so, well, what, what happens if you drink you know you, you're obviously a dating used to be a dating coach so you don't have to you know drink to you know have fun and approach girls and everything but what happens do you go to the next level is it the same or what happens when you drink mm, i think i become more annoying just a more annoying version okay yeah <laughs> yeah right i i know this even when i was even before he i knows. was dating coach yeah, yeah he's nodding yeah i just because i still i talk a lot obviously i don't need yeah. any substance to talk um that so that doesn't change um i already talk the most random things obviously also yeah. completely sober so that doesn't change i just become a more annoying personality right just like legit annoying Okay. And I keep saying that I'm drunk and everybody's like, oh, he had two glasses of wine. And I'm like, I'm oh, shit faced, guys. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's funny and I love it very much um, to be in a position where I can, I can be very, like literally like 10 years of teaching dating sober. Yeah. It teaches you how to be crazy without any substances. And I'm very happy that I mastered the skill because many times, many people can't. You, you know? just switch it on whenever you want, right? Um, yeah, yeah. But I, I can switch it on whenever I want, and it, but it takes me energy to switch it on sometimes. So especially right. when I'm super hustle mode, it takes me a while to switch that on. Yeah. Um, but then it's just like you're taking a tricycle downhill. It gets faster and faster, and then you're just like... Yeah. And then um, when I'm really riled up, like probably I will be today, I can't go to sleep because I'm still like, let's go, let, what's going on? Yeah, after I have you ideas. Know, your tours and stuff, you must feel super, super hyped up, you know, talking to yeah, tons yeah, of people. Yeah. Don't want to sleep almost because you're high, right? Yeah, it, exactly, like yeah. literally high. Like you get, we call the speakers high. Speakers high, um, okay. Where you're like, I've literally had this, not every time, but many times. I had like out of body experience on stage. Mm. I, would, I would talk, 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 and then I would see myself. I would like look at the back of my head while i'm talking so you're actually high then yeah le um. legit legit and then i would just be like and then i would like wake up i would snap out of it and then i would just see like uh 200 people staring at me and then i'm like how long did i just speak <laughs> and some guy like three hours bro keep going and i'm like Crazy. holy shit and yeah it, here's here's how it worked for me um and that's the best part ever because i never prepared anything Unless later on when I started pitching, I just had a PowerPoint, but like the first, whatever, six years, zero. I would just hop on stage. I'm like, hey, what's up? And I just start talking and then uh, get a couple of questions. And then the way, yeah. and it's so funny because later on when I started doing business talks, I got invited to like big business uh, um, events and I would be a speaker, you know? And then the, the organizers, they would like find me like 
an hour before my speech like freaking out max we don't have your powerpoint we need the powerpoint right and i'm like oh i don't have a powerpoint and they're like well, what are you going to speak about i'm like i don't know and they're like <laughs> what do you mean you, you don't what the you're on stage and they That's would freak crazy out crazy for them yeah. and i'll be like i don't know what i'm gonna talk about if i can freestyle it you know and then like five minutes before they're like what are you going to speak about i gotta introduce you i'm like i don't know they would lose their Damn. shit and i would have um i would have people on there that would be professional speakers for years and they're like you're lying dude don't don't fucking don't tell me you don't have anything prepared no way i've been speaking for 25 years don't fucking and i'm like i have zero i'm just a crazy dating coach that ha that just talks how, and how i mean you get and, to that stage um i mean look at me you know and that's always what i tell would tell them too i'm like look at me like i don't i don't blow girls away by my looks i'm I'm short, I'm 172 centimeters. Now I'm pretty handsome, but back then, a little bit puffier face, long hair, patchier beard. Funny enough, my, my beard started, the, the patches started getting covered. I think it's from the higher testosterone, which mm -hmm. is insane, because my dad has the same patches, mm -hmm. and his didn't get covered until he was 50. Anyways, side note. So I'm like, if you're a guy like me that is not extremely tall, and again, back then, I didn't have the tattoos. I didn't have the social status. I didn't have the brand. I was just a regular fucking 24-year-old. So if you don't have any of these things, the only tool at your disposal was what you say, at least for me. There was other guys that I would go out with or that I would teach that would be very good with dancing and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I never had another dancer. So for me, it was always like, just give me two minutes to talk away my face. I legitimately so like my words became I became so good at it and then in multiple languages too because I became good at it in German then I had to switch to English when I started being international and then I completely lost it in German I had to relearn that right. and the last thing was actually Austrian dialect because I associate that with you know me being the farm boy from the 5,000 people cow town and then and then I started getting really good at dialect as well so from that like and it's so funny because we got really deep now but it's infinitely harder to convince uh, an attractive 20 year old or 21 year old or 18 year old, depending on where you are in a nightclub that you are cool. Mm -hmm. That's infinitely harder to do than to convince a crowd of 2000 people on stage that you're competent or cool. It's easy shit in the world because just think about it logically, like an 18, 19, 21 year old, very attractive girl. I'm not talking about an average girl, I'm talking about a very attractive girl. She goes to the nightclub. I mean, by the time, like when she leaves the house, the cab driver is hitting on her, right? She leaves the cab. The guy at the valet is hitting on her. She stands in line. The guys in front of her and behind her are going to hit on her. Yeah. The, her friends are going to hit on her. The bartender hits on her. She stands 10 seconds alone uh, in, the, in the line to the bathroom. She gets approached 100 times. So you're just the next fucking douchebag yeah. that shows up. And plus, you're not attractive. Like Now I've, I know that I'm more attractive, but back then I wasn't. You're not, you're not tall. You, you're not the VIP guy. Man, I was wearing nine dollar H and M shirts. I looked like a bum half the because we also thought it was funny to look like a bum. So we would be like dressed worse than we are. Mm -hmm. I had already made my first million. I would purposefully still dress like a bum. I would not wear shoes and stuff like that, like unless I had to just to get in the club. I would just be horrible. Um, and and then I approached this girl. So she's like, yo, you know, in her head, she's like, hey, that's the hundredth guy that talked to me in the last hour. Yeah. He's neither the tall guy that I've been eyeballing the whole time, nor the cute guy. He's just some random bum. And, but I talked and then she's like, you're funny. What the fuck? <laughs> you know, like, damn, like this guy. And then it's, it's so funny. Like so many times when I would go home with a girl or be on a date, she would be like almost bummed out that I'm the guy she likes and not the actually attractive guy, you know? She's like, so many times I would have girls say, uh, you're like totally not the kind of guy I would ever hang out with me or go home with. Mm -hmm. Not at all. They would say this openly to my face, <laughs> also because they knew it wouldn't hurt me. That's a compliment I, though. Huh? That's a compliment. Total compliment, because yeah. it's a compliment to my charisma or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So she's like, like, yo, I've looked at all the, out of all the guys that talked to me today, you're like the bottom 10%. Yet, weirdly enough, you're the one who came home with me. So I've had this hundreds of times. Mm. Maybe not hundreds, but like multiple dozens of times. So when you do that, and then you talk to on stage, and if you think about the context, so you talk to someone 
uh, who's been approached 100 times and you're definitely the bottom 20% versus you talk to a crowd of people, they're literally physically sitting below you, you're up on a stage, there's yeah. a spotlight yeah. on you, they paid money to hear you speaking, yeah. easiest thing in the world yeah. to convince them like, hey, I have authority, I'm on damn stage. So it's almost like everything you do on stage, I cried on stage and they loved it. You know what I mean? Like cry to a 20 year old girl, she's like, what the fuck? <laughs> you know, but like I would cry on stage and they're like, oh, he's so relatable. You know, I had this one speech um, where my dad was in the crowd, it was Frankfurt a uh, couple of years ago, it was, it was one of the biggest business events I spoke at. And again, me, zero preparation. I just hop on stage, just ramble. And then, and then I was like, hey, my dad is here in the crowd. And by the way, one, one cool lesson that I realized about my dad was um, when I told him I need 5,000 euros to borrow to, to fly to the United States to work for free as an unpaid assistant for this Owen Cook guy without any promise of pay that I know only from the internet um, can I have 5,000 euros? Oh, and I quit my job and I quit my university, but that's my dream. My dad pulled me aside and he said the following thing. He said, Max, I don't think it's a good idea. I think it's a really stupid idea for obvious reasons. You're going to work for free. You're going to borrow money to fly to Miami. You quit university. You quit your job. That's a really stupid idea. But I know as your father, every single idea that you've had so far, you've stuck to it and you grinded it out. So me and your mom, we're gonna give you the money. And I was on stage telling that story with knowing that my dad was somewhere in the crowd, I couldn't see it because the light mm -hmm. was on me. And I just randomly, I didn't plan it, I just told that story and I'm like, and I realized it like halfway on stage, I'm like, my dad literally said, this is not a good idea, but he gave his fucking 21 year old son the biggest gift a father could ever give you, and this is probably similar to what your father gave you when he said, it's cool, go do your thing. He said, even though I, as the older, more experienced man, don't believe this is a good idea, I trust that you're gonna make it work. And that, I believe, is the biggest gift a father can give his son, that despite his own experience, he, tr he values the trust that he has in his son higher than his own experience. And I say this on stage and I just cry. I just start crying and it was like 2000 people. And I hear some people like, oh, you know, like when you mm. cry, oh, holy shit, you know? And even that, people loved it. Even though it was not planned, I'm, I'm a fucking 25 year old, you know, I'm supposed to be like this business coach and I'm just crying on fucking stage because I talk about my fucking dad. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and even that, so what I'm trying to say is like, whenever you're on stage, it's like, whatever you do once you have that authority people are just gonna frame it in a nice way yeah so that that was a very beautiful intense moment so with the speaking the the way i usually do this is i have an idea it forms in my head and it's like a it's like a it's like a seed and then out of that seed grows a stem like a like a tree trunk and that's the core idea of like, hey, that's what I want to talk. Hey, fuck, everybody listen, I have this idea. You should do this. And then that's kind of the main idea. And then out of this main idea grows a twig, you know, like a little, you know, like a little twig. And then that grows into like three other twigs. And every twig is an idea. I'm like, okay, this is the main idea. Like, for example, uh, fitness is a gateway drug in personal development. But then I'm like, you know, the reason why this is, is not only because it's good for your body, but because it's also good for your mentality. And then, so that mentality idea is one extra twig. And then that grows three other twigs yeah. of like, because what it teaches you is this and this and this. And then I'm like, oh, and by the way, you know what else is a gateway drug? Uh, social dynamics. So that's another, yeah, okay. it goes in the other direction. Yeah. And then like I speak, but the thing is like my brain creates these twigs much faster than my mouth can speak. So I'm still over there talking about the fitness thing. And then I'm like, oh, and then I gotta work off all these here. But while I'm working these off, my brain creates these other connections over there. And it's like da 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 da. And then I have this full tree. And then you know you have nuances, personal anecdotes. They're like leaves that grow on each and every one of these twigs. And then it, while I'm speaking, I have this whole tree in my head. And then I just work it off. Right. one by one yeah yeah and then it's like three hours later and i'm like the tree is painted everybody and then i kind of wake up and then they're like you spoke three hours and i'm like great 
and then I would just pitch, buy my programs, buy, <laughs> and that was it. That would be it. And that was that. And you do this every day. I used to do it almost every day because I used to do it on stage on Thursday. Then I would do it to clients on Friday, Saturday. Then I would do it into a video on Sunday. Would add live streams and stuff like that. And I still do it now with with clients. You know, I mean, you and I we have had many one on ones where I would just ramble. Then yeah. I would do it in the group calls. And because you said that earlier, like I have almost all my group calls at night. I would go to bed after a group call because a lot of times it would be one of the last things I would do that night. So it's like open-ended. I would go to bed after a group call. I would fall asleep and keep coaching. I would have the faces of you guys in my fucking dream and I would still coach these people. And then I would wake up and I'm like, Max, you're an idiot. You're sleeping. You're not, you're not on the call anymore. And then sometimes I would still, my brain would still have ideas for a specific person that I talked to. And then the next morning I wake up and I'm like, by the way, <laughs> I, dreamed, <laughs> I dreamed that I told you this. So I just want to give you this on the way as well. Uh, but it's not perfect though, because when my brain still rattles, I don't get as much recovery. Yeah. Just like right now. It's yeah. again, you asked me one question. There was all these tree trunks <laughs> yeah, that I had yeah, to yeah. work off. Do you get energy from speaking and coaching people? Uh, yes, yes and no. It's weird because from like I'm, I'm awake. I'm sharp as hell now. But at the same time, I also, uh, whether that's an in-person event or a one-on-one -on -one or a group coaching like with Zoom, is like I, it feels a lot like I left it all there. It's like I give everything. And then many times, like for example, when I'm, when I'm hanging out with someone, um, when I'm hanging out with someone before and afterwards, and I do, you know, so I speak to them before and I'm like, I got my group session now. And then an hour, two, three later, that person is like, blah, 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 like wants my attention again. And I'm just like, what? I'm, my brain is out. Oh, okay. I left it all there in an ideal scenario. Not always, but I would say like 80% of the time I leave it all there. And my brain is still rattling and it takes me a while to come down and be normal again. It's great. You, I mean, it must be similar to you too. You do more one-on-ones right now, right? Yeah, one-on-one. -on -one. Do you go on, on crazy rants sometimes? Um, yeah, I do. But I try to, you know, tone it down sometimes to let, let them speak a bit more so I know mm. that I'm on the right track, you know, mm -hmm. rather than just keep rambling. But yeah, I do, I do get energy from, you know, not rambling, but saying things that benefits the other person. I don't know. It's just a great feeling. I mean, that's why I'm into coaching, right? I love yeah. helping. You see, yeah. You see what it does to, like especially it's the same in one-on-one -on -one as well as in a group like when you talk to someone and you yeah. see that moment where it clicks yeah and you're like i yeah. got him yeah, 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 you yeah. know it's like an upward spiral yeah. yeah yeah but i think i think when you start doing more group coaching which yeah. is also something that yeah I'm that's the next step for me. i think you love that shit okay. i think you thrive in that okay because at I, the I moment know now because yeah. we talk for fucking three hours you are a guy like this okay and people would eat that up man they would love it and okay. it, it's so cool because they smile and they like they're like holy shit the rant is happening <laughs> and you're just like <laughs> you love it dude okay yeah i'm looking forward to that because at the moment it's coming to a stage where one-on-one -on -one i have a lot of clients so it's like call after call after call so yeah. i can see it's taking a lot of time just coaching each client mm. so yeah i'll be very i'm looking forward to switching to group coaching and one-on-one -on -one, of course yeah. as well I mean, you can add it. Just start. Let's just start adding it. Yeah. Um, once a week or something. Hey, this okay. is the big life thing, you know. And the cool thing is because we talked about it off camera earlier as well. It's like what I do nowadays, which we have to implement again while I'm here, is I just turn the camera on. Not only the shitty zoom camera, but like have a DSLR camera rolling, mm -hmm. hooked mm -hmm. up to the sound. Because so many times I go on a crazy epic rant and I'm like, this is great for the reels. And then yeah. you just cut that out, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and funny enough, what it started with me now is like the last fucking 10, uh, I have one-on-ones with my sales team as well. And with some of the higher ups in my team as well, like the executives, I have weekly one-on-ones with them. And I go on crazy rants with those guys too. And these are just 30 minutes where I'm like, how are you doing, you know? So for example, uh, Victor, who has been, you know him, Victor, right? Victor. I think you worked with him. He, he used yeah. to be uh, one of our setter. He actually used to be one of our coaches. Okay. Then he used to be one of our DMers and then he became a setter. And he became one of, a, one of our two top setters in the company. And now he got into a, an executive position where he trains the new setters that are coming in. And uh, he has one-on-ones with me too. So now I'm kind of teaching him. Um, he's switching his profession from doing phone calls 
to managing a team, which is a completely different skill yeah. set. And uh, so he asks me a lot of management questions, which is very normal. It's kind of similar to the level that you're at where you're now hiring the first people. It's like, okay, am I too harsh? Am I too lenient? Where is the balance? And it's a very intricate process. And, and, and he asks me questions about that as well. And now I'm just ranting like crazy to him and he and it's very cool and i'm like i should start recording these as well mm. at the very least only record my voice because it should still be kind of a platform for them to vent and be like this is personal stuff yeah because some of them you know they're like hey i have this problem and stuff like that but at the very least record my voice and a video because those rants are also amazing and for me it's almost sad when i go on a rant somewhere privately without shooting it because it's gone and I tried so many times to recapture that, and sometimes I, it works, many times it doesn't. Yeah, it's just, it has to be in the moment. Yeah. Right, yeah. And it's again, like, you get fired up, you're like, ah, it's beautiful. It's it, like, public yeah. speaking is, is, is very crazy. And, uh, and like, especially when you just freestyle it all day, it's, it's such a cool art form. Yeah. Hmm. You are an artist, like, at the core, right? Because you were into playing music and, so. I, I guess uh, it's weird because I think I suck at it. Like, um, especially music. I, I'm a musician. I'm, I know how to play drums. I sing. I play guitar. Mm. But like when I compare myself, when I look at other musicians, I'm like, I could never do that. No yeah. way. And what, I'm like... What, what aspect of... Um, the, first of all, under, I, have z I feel like I have zero talent for a melodic understanding. Mm. Like I could never come up with a catchy melody. No, like, every, like I played in many punk rock, classic rock and metal bands. And like my riffs would always be super boring and shitty. And then I would have like my random guitarist, he would just be drunk. I was like, hey, what about this? And I'm like, whoa, holy shit, <laughs> what the? And they would do intricate and catchy and good. Right. And, I could never do any of that. I think I'm too analytic for that. Mm. So I think I have an, a cre I, I think I am creative. Definitely, yeah. But not in that form. Okay. Uh, my, my, my thing is like, I, I think I'm good with media. I can see things in videos. I'm like, the video is going to be like this and the cut is that and then you get a shot of me like this. And, and with speaking, I think those are my, kind of my two biggest strengths. Music I like, it's a hobby of mine, but I don't think I'm virtuoso enough and never will be, but which is fine. What about you? Do you play an instrument? Um, I used to. I used to play the violin, but no shit. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't played for ages, so I probably should get back to it, huh? Do you have a violin? Not at home. I have it back in Hokkaido, but not in Tokyo. Damn. Damn. <laughs> What's man. your advice? Should I, should I play the violin again? Get back to it? Fuck because it, man. It'd probably I, be cool, right? Yeah, I think if you picked it up now, you would learn quicker than ever before because you yeah. have so much of the other track records. I used to be decent. Um, mm. My dad says I have like natural tone ah, skill, sick. but yeah. You know, it's like, I, I, my relationship to music was pure passion for a long time, like yeah. very passionate. And then it became professional when I wanted to become a professional musician and I practiced to get to conservative conservatory of Vienna. And then I got an injury, which mm -hmm. now I just recently started thinking about it. It happened for a reason, like we talked about before. I got yep. tendonitis, and I'm like, it's just my body saying, stop, man. Mm -hmm. You're fucking up your whole life. You're, you're forcing this passion of yours into this professional realm. It's not supposed to be there. Right. And I think that was my body putting a hard stop on it. And, um, and now it's back again at just pure passion. Like, if I play guitar, I just fuck around on it. I don't mm -hmm. practice. I'm just like, fuck it. I want to doodle around I want to play this random thing now and I think if you picked up the violin again it might even become an outlet for you where you just start jamming on it because it's a it's Maybe. such a different brain engagement than the other stuff yeah. you do I feel I'm very logical like I tend to overthink things so I want to be more like you where you're just a spontaneous do things you know it's, yeah. I think it's good to sometimes not overthink things yeah so yeah maybe playing the violin might be, be a good balance because I'm always thinking and logical. I see that you're thought, yeah. you're very serious. Yeah, which is yeah, yeah. amazing. So my nickname was Captain Serious back then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Junior high. I was like, why are you calling me that? You was know? that New Zealand or what? Yeah, New Zealand. Yeah. <laughs> so why are you calling me that? You know? I used to be that serious. Even there you were serious yeah. about it. Yeah, so I was like super into tennis. So I'll like even if there was like ten minute break between um 
between classes, I'll run to the tennis courts and practice my serves. Oh my you know? God. I was like super serious, man. <laughs> so I was like captain serious, study hard, you know, tennis gym, like fucking on it. And I think that's my personality. I still am pretty serious. So I think I should try let go a bit more maybe. 100%. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, as we're, ra- I think we got to slowly wrap things up. That, that's one last thing I want to I give you on your way. Like, and I even told you this before I came to Japan. I'm like, I always yeah. said, like, dude, we got to hang out when we're there. When I'm in Japan, we got to hang out a lot because you're very serious. I feel it of everything you do. And that's really amazing. That's definitely better to be on that side of the spectrum than not being serious enough. Because if you're not being serious enough, you're just as constantly broke artist that is just yeah. like, even if you have the skill of fitness, you're just like, you never scale beyond anything and dirt and you're, too serious which is great because you can always tap into that seriousness Mm -hmm. and work yourself out of any shitty situation that you ever gonna be in i guarantee you with your personality type you're never gonna hit uh financial trouble serious financial trouble at least not for a prolonged time Mm -hmm. it could be that you dip but you work yourself out of it yeah which is i have the same type a personality it's the greatest gift you could ever ask for but if you don't learn to nurture that other side of you, that wolf that, uh, you know, there's two wolves inside you, whichever, which one becomes the strongest is the one you feed. So you keep feeding that serious wolf. Yeah. What's going to happen is over the years, like after 32, 34, 35, that seriousness can very easily turn into bitterness mm. and you get this frowny face. And like, I notice it. Like I have a lot, this frowny face and I'm very well aware of it, mm. which is why you know, the 30 minutes after a 40, 14 hour work session, I fuck around. I'm stupid. Um, I got to do silly things. I got to scroll through the stupidest memes, get on pretty much nerves because I like it's, it's feeding the, the, it's feeding the other wolf that would otherwise starve to death as yeah. weird as it sounds. Like. And, and I think if you learn to nurture that other side of you, the cool thing is like when you nurture the stupid side, the silly side of you, it doesn't hurt the serious side in yeah. fact i would even argue that it strengthens that one as well because it puts balance in and that's for example a lot of people ask me like okay max for that serious about business like why do you have so many female friends like why do you go to cyprus you bring four friends with you they're all girls because i'm like because girls get bored if i'm fucking serious yeah. they just them being around force me to be silly right because they're they're gonna be like this is boring let's do something you know like hey max like let's go do some fun shit and and if i'm just like no let me grind it wouldn't work yeah so it's like my it's like my safety net of like making sure that that silly wolf within me doesn't starve to death and um i think if you work on that as well you'll become a super balanced guy and the higher you climb up the more balance is important so when i hang out with people that are way above me you know they're making whatever eight million a month, ten million a month. When I hang out with these guys, I don't see them working harder than me. I don't see them necessarily being smarter than other people. I see them being more fucking balanced. I'm like, this guy is actually really fucking chill, even though he makes so much fucking money, has so much more pressure, and that's kind of like the thing that everybody needs to work on mm-hmm. to to feed. So if so, for people who are listening, uh, you got to figure out where on that on that spectrum you are you are very much on the serious side so you can basically go all in on the silly side and nurture that for a while until you're in the balance uh if you're more on the silly side you got dude shut the fuck up and start grinding for two years non-stop just to nurture the the hardcore side the serious side and like everybody needs to have that awareness to figure out where they are and then nurture the other side it is about the fucking balance and that's also like why like I would say like 80% of people that I meet, they're on the on the non-serious side way too mm. much. And that's why so much of my content is, shut the fuck up, grind it out, motherfucker. Yeah. It's not because that's the only thing that's getting you to do the thing. It, that's just the counterbalance to most people's bullshit. Anyways, man, it's epic yeah. to have you and, here, dude. Yeah, and with the girl side of things. Yeah, when I'm with girls though, I, it's easier to open up. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, balance, man. Balance is key, definitely. These days, I've just been, you know, working and yeah. So, so we're gonna go to the Tokyo Speedway <laughs> to, to balance it <laughs> yeah, out. Let's we, do it. We're gonna go get steak, steak. to balance it out. Yeah. We're gonna get cigars and drinks to yeah. balance that out. Oh, and balance. one more thing that we're gonna do: uh, we're, go, we're gonna have a cheat day where we're just gonna get up and walk through the city and just eat 
all, all the places like because for him and i we don't know any of the food here yeah, yeah. so you welcome the drums where we're just like i'm gonna buy this squid candy or whatever the <laughs> fuck i just started eating all yeah, of man, that. let's do it yeah let's do it really fun. More, of more of that magical drink more Whoa, placenta what's... drink <laughs> <laughs> i need to try that dude we'll go tomorrow yeah, yeah, yeah. let's get some placenta i know where to go no never i know where I, to get I've it i've never man. even heard of it man dude it's great <laughs> have some placenta crew unite <laughs> He does. Know what it is. He does. No, yeah, now yeah. I know. Now every I know. normal person so, knows what a placenta. Yeah, placenta, is. yeah, I know, but I didn't know there was a drink <laughs> sponsored by placenta. <laughs> hey, dude, it, it was it was a sick episode. Thank you so Thank much you for joining. Much. Uh, where can people find you? Um, on Instagram, Alec underscore Nakano is my personal with a K N A K A L A L E K underscore N A K N K a N O Nakano. We'll, we'll put it in the description of the podcast. Yeah. YouTube channel as well for all YouTube, the Japanese speakers. YouTube is Alec Lifestyle Fitness. Yeah. So Boom. it's all in Japanese, but if you guys speak Japanese or want to learn Japanese or want to see the lifestyle in Japan, fitness lifestyle in Japan, follow me. Give him a follow. He's an absolute legend. Thanks for having for Thank being on much. the thing here. And welcome to Japan. And yeah, let's have fun. Enjoy. Let's feast. GG. GG.